Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Max's Man Cave, episode 73. And we have got so much news for you guys to talk about. I don't even know if we'll be able to fit it in within this two-hour span of time. So we're just going to get right into it. The first thing I want to mention or the first thing I want to address is today is Palm Sunday. And uh, it would I would be remiss in my duties as a Christian without mentioning it, at least. Uh, I know we have a lot of viewers that are Christian. I know we have a lot of panelists that are Christian. But I just wanted to read this real quick. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week or the week leading up to Easter Sunday. Most of us know the importance of Easter is one of the most foundational days of our faith when Christ victoriously rose from the grave, defeating sin and death. Uh, but the significance of Palm Sunday holds uh, something else, uh, lots of other things with it. Uh, in Scripture, we see that in John, they say they took the palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And we actually see this in all four accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the Gospels, is uh, the, the people meeting him with palm branches as he is riding in on a donkey, them shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So I will say Christ is King. Uh, he is risen. And I hope everyone enjoys their Palm Sunday and their Easter Sunday if you guys don't see us next week. So uh, hail and amen. We have the Wicked Plumber who has become a member. Thank you, Wicked Plumber. I think this was from earlier this morning for the paint stream that we did, the Warhammer stream. Um, but uh, good to see you. And we also have Cajun Corey for 20 months. My dude, uh, that's like, it's almost two years. It's crazy. Thank you so much for the, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> flashbacks. Uh, thank you so much for the 20 uh, months. He says, yo, Max, what's up? We got Jamin D in the house and also the Geeky Puppet Show. What's hey. going on, everyone? Hey, hey thank you for being great here. guys. Great yeah, guys. hell yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, we have some breaking news. Um, so I was just alerted of this literally five minutes before we went live. So we were a little bit late going live. But uh, breaking meaning within the last 24 hours. So essentially, cartoonist Kayfabe uh, is nuked from orbit. Is that is that how you would say it, Drew? Is that what you uh, is, were those the yeah, words this that is, you used? When you try looking up their channel, it no longer exists. It has ceased to be. <laughs> it is the dead bird from the Monty Python. It uh, yes. yeah. They're gone. The channel is completely gone. You cannot find it, cannot look it up. They do have an Instagram page, whoever you type it in, but there is nothing there. All their posts are gone. It is, yeah. Now, um, most people are probably saying, well, what the heck? You know, I see, you know, all these videos referencing Cartoonist Cafe, but not the actual channel itself. What must have happened to it? Because the channel had what, over a thousand videos or something, over 90K a, subscribers? Yeah, almost 100,000 subscribers. They were getting close to that, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes, there is a, a video by John Del, De, De La Rose, uh, JDA, but 18 hours ago, we also saw that EVS did a stream concerning this. He talked about uh, this Instagram post that we're going to soon reference here in, in the cartoonist kayfabe lore. Um, but even before him, it looked like Akapad. Uh, I've never heard of this uh, YouTuber before, but Akapad in 22 hours ago did a uh, did a video saying Ed Piscor hits up a teenager allegedly. So we think that this could potentially be breaking news in terms of Ed Piscor speaking with a minor allegedly um, inappropriately, which is why, you know, DMs were released, were, were released and then, um, having them take the channel down. Now, I think Aaron, was it you that was saying that in that state, the age of consent is 17? I believe in Pennsylvania, which I think this is where that, that this took place. I believe okay. the age of consent is 17. Yep. Hey, look at who we have Whoa, here. We got a Whoa. special guest on a Sunday night. Oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, I had to I, smack the wife in the mouth and say, hey, I got something I got to do. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Jeez. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm happy Kyle is here because I've waited so long to say this, but hey, daddy. <laughs> I mean, he is he is our big big he's bad dad. booty daddy. He's the only one that's the dad out of us, so you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's the only father. Yeah, that yeah. is true. Yeah. I, I waited to just say Kyle. just to just say live. Sh- shut up, shut up, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to say that. Everyone wants to tell. How does that. it feel? It feels good to get off your chest, right? Oh man, yeah. it does feel good. Like- <sighs> it's been such a good week, and this is just like mm, cherry on top. Cherry on yeah. top. I love it. That's why I'm here. Well, uh, yeah, and and unfortunately, Drew and Kyle and I didn't get to do our Friday evening uh, video. So if you guys weren't able to see us on Friday, um, I was I had to do some family stuff. I had to get some family stuff situated, and uh, I was alerted to an unfortunate news, uh, you know, relating to some fam some family and also job stuff. So I just said, you know what, let's take the evening off. But it is good to see. Kyle tonight. So what brings you here tonight, brother? Did you want to talk about Ed Piscor? Did you want to talk about uh, crowdfunding? What was it that brought you to the stream tonight? No, I felt like I had to support you, my man. So I wanted to be here for you and we didn't do Friday. So I thought I'd show up for a little Mm. bit here tonight. So dude, I'm I'm just here for any and everything. I'm just, I'm just here for it all. Well, I appreciate it, brother. That, that really means a lot. Thank you. So uh, your voice is welcome, even though we give you a hard time about Jim Lee and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, he's the guy hey, when you're at the top and you're the greatest, it's understandable. All of the, the bottom <laughs> feeders are just wanting to just try to take you out. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> See, it feels good, right? It's cathartic. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you and Drew just went uh, to a, uh, a convention, correct? Yeah, Indiana Comic Con was this past weekend. So nice. Um, stopped um, in for the day. Drew was there. Uh, yesterday. I will be yeah, right back, there. guys. I just got a voicemail. It might be related to this, so I'm going to see if there's any any. Topic. Oh yeah, please oh. do. Breaking, breaking. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Um. Well, while Aaron is getting us some juicy news, uh, yeah. Do you guys want to share a little bit about the uh, the convention? And I'll pull up um, a quick little little picture of the three of y'all. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it ahead. was a yeah, sure. It was a great time. I mean, it was it's a smaller Indiana Comic Con's a smaller show, but we had there's a lot of celebrities there. But comic book wise, I mean, Mike, Mike Barron, Pat Broderick, and Mark Bagley were and Jim Starlin were like the biggest names there. And uh, Saturday they were busy. Jim Starlin had a line that was nuts, and uh, but it was great seeing. Uh, there he is. There, there's the Red Baron himself, Mike Barron. Yeah, just Man. he was signing books all day Saturday. Sold out almost. Sold out of almost all of his uh, copies of uh, uh, Bronze Star. Actually, I think he sold out of them today. And uh, oh he, wow! He, then he told us about some upcoming projects that we could talk about uh, a little later behind the scenes that I'm sure we can't talk about online. But um, he signed a bunch of books for us. Incredibly grateful. We had we had dinner with him. I had dinner with him Friday night and Saturday night. Kyle joined us for dinner Saturday night. Great guy. Great stories. Just very humble guy, and yeah, it, I'll never ever forget it. That is so cool, man. Yeah, he he uh, he looks like he's super grateful, and I'm really thankful that uh, that he's been selling out of all his books. That's fantastic. Um, by the I, way, chat. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add. Also, if you can't tell by the angle at which this picture was taken, clearly I was the one who took the picture because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, who, who, why, why are they like down by your ankles? What? No. So what's what's funny is that Stuart Sager, who's a professional comic book artist, we a friend of ours, he took the photo. He said, "Hey, this is a very dramatic angle. I think this is the best one." And uh, so, yeah, it makes you guys look like you're one. seven feet tall, like from the NBA. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. But it, it also doesn't help that uh, Mike Barron isn't the tallest of, of individuals. He, he, so. He's a short. He's a he's a short guy, and yeah. uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Drew, did you get anything from the convention? Did you or Kyle get get anything from the convention? Oh, oh I got some goodies here. So Ooh. I got a copy of uh, Bronze Star, signed by both Pat Broderick and Mike Barron. Beautiful. The laughing. interiors of that are just gorgeous. Oh. Kyle, tell tell them about the interiors you saw for issue two. <laughs> oh my God, I I almost came. Like it, it was absolutely <laughs> uh, unbelievable. I when he showed his his pages for issue two, I was I was just like, oh my god! Like 
this this shouldn't even be real. This isn't even a real thing right now. Oh wow. Had to uh had to change change the pants. Yes. <laughs> and come back to the convention. Yeah. Um, dude, I, I believe it. Those interiors for issue number one were gorgeous. And I hope that they release like a black and white version of that. Um, you know, just to see, is there a hardcover drew of black and white? I don't know if it's black and white, but there is, yeah, there's like an oversized like artist edition they've, they've made of bronze star. It's it's, it's marked down in price from $99 to 75, but yeah, it's the black and white 11 by 17s because Pat draws them all by hand on 11 by 17s. And they, they are beautiful. And this is another one I got right here. The uh, Legion of Superheroes Great Darkness Saga. But why did I get that sign? Why did I have that? Because Pat Broderick worked on it. And even nice. he was like, oh, yeah, I do work on that. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Naturally, I got – this is the last one. All right. Maximum Carnage, Amazing Spider-Man, signed by Mark Bagley. There we go. Hey. And you got it personalized. And personalized, yeah yeah sweet man hell yeah well thank you for showing those off and uh we i i will um bring up the convention probably this coming friday when we get to talk a little bit more about it um because i'd love to hear uh more about the con and and what you guys were able to do and any cool news from any creators and you know hanging out with those guys grabbing drinks it's always a a fantastic time uh cool news stories from mike (laughs) oh dude yeah i'm sure mike Barron has like thousands of stories under his belt right so um but uh aaron was good news bad news anything uh concerning our 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 man oh oh <laughs> oh he's he's signing i'm it. uh <laughs> i'm playing phone tag so i'm like actually like being driven a little bit nuts right here because <laughs> i'm oh, like okay. is it something is it something do you have a scoop yeah i, I reached I know, out to right? one of, i reached out to one of my sources that generally has uh has some good background info so. okay Where's the pooper scoopers when you need them? I know. Uh, <laughs> I think that, I mean, I think this kind of like, I mean, there's always those people on Twitter who are like, I've known this for years. And it's like, shut uh, up. Yeah. <laughs> if you did, why didn't you say something? You know, right. if there's a truth to it, why didn't you say something? You don't get to come in afterwards and go, I knew the whole time. Well, then you're a piece yeah. of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Well, the, the pooper scoopers always like will come up with the most wild accusations or like rumors and these rumors are like completely unsubstantiated, have like zero backing or reference or like anything. And they'll make like 30 of them. And if one of them comes true, they'll be like, see, see, guys, I told you, I told you, what did I say? And it's like, dude, out of the 30 or 50 rumors that you pooper scoop, <laughs> like the one that made it came true. So uh, <laughs> the worst is uh, the worst is Mike Zero. I don't know why anybody watches that channel. That guy oh, just yeah, lies man. and lies and lies. And like yeah. his source is always like a Reddit post that he himself put up. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I said I heard Tom Cruise was going to be in a Marvel movie. Therefore, I can report I heard Tom Cruise is going to be in a Marvel movie. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't yeah. the, I don't get the problem is. It's not a lie. I said it and I heard myself say it. It's like oh. uh, someone told me they thought it would be cool if uh, if he was Iron Man or something. So I'm going to then say he is Iron Man in the next film. And it's like, okay, yeah. Uh, but these do not seem unsubstantiated. Uh, these claims actually have some merit. Uh, there seems to be DMs that have been released. Uh, so relating back to the cartoonist kayfabe stuff with Ed Piscor, it does seem like there were um, legitimate uh, things that were like, you know, DMs that were released. Uh, so from the account Sid Goblin. So this is, uh, I believe her name is Molly. She recently posted this on one of her stories. Woke up to see a lot of randomly terrible and unwarranted things said about me in my career. So I'm just taking a break from my phone and internet for a long while. Um, I think because of the backlash from the Me Too era stuff, people are trying to call her out especially because Ed Piscor just recently opened a gallery. Is that, is that uh, correct from what my understanding is? Like an art yeah, gallery? Yeah, it's an art gallery. Uh, it's going to be open from, like, supposed to be, I don't know if it still is now, but it was supposed to be from April to August this year down in Pittsburgh. Okay. So which makes me think, you know, because when something like this arises, right, and you get 
a, a female who is trying to take advantage of the Me Too movement, saying, you know, oh, I was groomed. Well, can I say groomed? Are we? We're 15 minutes into the stream. Sure, why not? Um, you get women who will say, like, oh, I was groomed or I was abused or like she's releasing all of these DMs and saying, oh, he's creepy. Oh, he was abusing me. I was underage. Blah blah. Why are these coming up now? Go ahead, Josh. You're you're gonna say that. go 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 back down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And go back down, go back down. This guy, this guy. Uh, uh, the, oh, yeah, oh, right there. Um, I, I'd have to read it. I haven't read this yet, but we got a lot of uh, a lot of likes going on between these comments. So, yeah, a lot of a lot, yeah. lot of love going back and forth. A lot of encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. She's not. A she's of not. Bombing of love, if you will. Mm. Well, so that's what the accusation is: is that he was love bombing her and her art to say. Hey, I think you're amazing. Your art is so good, blah, blah. I want to work with you on a, on a book. But it looks like she was reciprocating. I mean, she wasn't really, it, it doesn't seem like she was really saying, Hey, stop. I don't, I don't right. want this to happen. Or like, you know, um, lots of kissy faces, lots of hearts. Draw anything cool lately, nerdy girl. That to me, that's unassuming. That's, oh. Well, sorry, I got I got a little nervous, Max. I thought these were the texts that you and I had between each other. Carry on, carry on, carry on. <laughs> oh, what's up, what's up, nerdy girl? Uh -oh. <laughs> Josh, Josh, don't don't out me like that, because then you're gonna me too me later in my career. Is it too, is it too is it too soon for us to all like get super gay on the stream? Or no, oh, no, we're 15 minutes in. We're okay. <laughs> yeah, we're it's all right. Yeah. Um, and then he he goes on to say, "You're so fucking good, Molly." Um you know but then her statement is ed pisker is a creep he likes little high school girls and slid into my dms when i was 17 years old i didn't know of him and he found me simply by liking one of my pictures so this is just you know initially when this news broke i was watching this last night on evs's stream and i i i you know i i texted the guys and i said do we want to talk about this tomorrow night and I think Kyle, you and I had kind of gone back and forth and we were like, honestly, it's, there's not enough info here, right? Like, let's, let's take a step back. Maybe, maybe Ed hasn't said anything or, or maybe, you know, this girl hasn't said anything and let, let's wait. But with the news of cartoonist kayfabe, just completely nuking their YouTube channel and their, and their Instagram account. I don't know, man, that that's bad news. Um, so I, it's it's tough to say when something like this happens. Uh, I want to be incorrect. Like this one is like naughty girl. That's my favorite. It's like okay, it, you know I don't know. There's this there does feel groomy. This does feel these, groomy yeah. to me. Like just I'm reading it and it's just like I feel like you'd be a good partner in crime. Yeah, You're not a snitch, are you? Yeah. If we if we robbed some banks, you wouldn't rat me out, would you? That's groomy. I don't like that's that. That's weird. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's, you're Agreed. dancing around. Yeah, you're dancing mm -hmm. around the, uh, you know, kind of the thing about like what we're doing. What I'm doing is wrong. Yeah, but you're cool yeah. with it, right? It really, yeah, it feels like I'm watching to catch a predator right now. Watching those chests, oh, no. those chests back and forth. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it looks this like was someone. Also if this was, if those messages were like between two people that were of, you know, comparable age or even like, you know, older, like just, just older in general, like even if the guy was like in his thirties and she was like in her mid to late twenties, you'd be like, all right, well, it's just, you know, it's just that kind of flirting. But yeah, yeah no, it's with, with a, like a 17 year old, it feels like you're like going like, Oh, cause he, he made sure to verify her age up above too. I saw that. Yeah, she says that she was 17 turning 18, a senior in high school, and he was 40 at the time. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. So that's, first of all, super icky. And when yeah, I first yeah. heard it, I was like, uh, I was like, gross, but is gross enough to burn a man's entire life to the ground? And I didn't know mm. that it was because I just heard like vague allegations. But now that we're kind of like looking at this just at a glance, I'm going, this is, um, this is rough. Yeah. And and the more you read it, the more you like hear about this, the more news that's been coming out. And especially with the channel being nuked, because I, I don't think it was YouTube that got rid of it. You know, it was it was Ed and, and uh, Jim Rugg. I think they probably talked about this and they were probably like, listen, for for PR, you know, circumstance or for, for PR situations like this, like, I think it's best that we take it down. Maybe. I don't know, man. Well, uh, 
I would also say, and look, you know, I was the first one to come in when, we, when this first came up last night and was like, hey, do we have any details? Do we know what was said? Uh, right. What's the age of this girl? What's the age of consent in the state? Not to make it not to say that it's not icky, like it's definitely icky. But, you know, is it illegal or not based on that state? I, I think mm-hmm. kind of creates a, a different level of seriousness with this. However, I think them taking everything down is also a sign that there is more. Um, mm. and, and I, it makes me wonder if there was a conversation between these two about like, yo, like what the hell's going on? Like how bad mm. is this? And he's like, yeah, I fucked up dude. And then we're going to find out there is, I don't know, maybe a 14 year old, a six, like we, we don't Oof. know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I'll say that we have a friend in common that made a comment, uh, that he's always kind of been known for being sleazy like this. So I mm. think it's a matter of time before we get more details. Oh man. It's so, you know, it's so, um, it's so tough when you hear about this stuff because the cartoonist kayfabe channel really was something different. I mean, they were two guys that were, you know, artists, you know, really well established within the industry, just talking about comics, going over through these, these different Marvel DC image books and would talk about the different inking or the different layers or the different, you know, paneling layouts and stuff like that. They do wizard reviews and it, it just seems so harmless. Right. And so for something like this to come out, it sucks. Um, I, you know, I, I would never, I, I don't want to assume anything until all the information is out. Uh, but I do think one, it's a little bit convenient that this stuff came out now as Ed is like, you know, succeeding his career, but two, the fact that it is coming out and reading some of these DMS, it's, it's creepy. It's, it's a little off putting and, uh, it doesn't look good for the future. So. Well, Um, if you feel like if you're somebody who, you know, and and maybe even at the time, like, you know, she's 17, she's liking the attention. She feels like, oh, this artist is interested in me. And, and, you know, yeah, we are kind of like flirting. And even if she's fine with it at that point, what is going on? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What is that noise? Okay. The one with her mic. (laughs) Um, Drew, are you playing footsie with your mic? (laughs) What? Are Are you trying to get (laughs) <laughs> Are you suggesting this conversation is getting me hot and bothered? Of course not. <laughs> no, 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 no. I hope not. No, I hope it's not I hope getting not, I hope not. Um, <laughs> you know, even even if all of that is true, and two things can be true, she may have liked it at the time, and then as she gets older and a little more mature, she starts to realize, oh, that was really creepy. That was really creepy what happened. And then mm. she hears that he's got a gallery opening, and she's like, oh, geez, you know, like he's just getting bigger and bigger. And who knows who he's who know who knows who he's after now? Who knows who he's going to be swooping on? I mean, that can all be true. I don't know if it is. I'm just saying that you know everybody's so quick to come out, and you know because there were a lot of grifters in the Me Too movement who saw an opportunity to advance mm-hmm. themselves by taking down you know taking down people or accusing people falsely. That's always going to happen. There's always going to be false accusations. But I think that we do you know it is important for us to give the benefit of the doubt, uh, you know, when these things come along, and to and to assume the best, and also. You know, when people go, oh, well, you know, look, this girl is messed up or whatever. Not necessarily this girl, but just in these situations, they're like, this girl is messed up. Well, who do you think predators prey upon? Mm. They prey upon people who have problems. So, you know, that's not an immediate dismissal of accusations like this. So I think that everything needs to be evaluated on the basis of the evidence as it comes out. And like you said, the fact that they nuked the channel, I agree with Josh, does make me think like this is the tip of the iceberg. And maybe they're worried, you know, maybe... uh, Ed's worried about what else is going to come out. That's mm. just an assumption, but it usually tracks that way. Yeah. Yep. Hey, we haven't seen everything that uh, Bo DeMeo has been accused of yet, so we're still waiting well, on that. You know, <laughs> like I'm just guessing. I'm just story. guessing that uh, I'm just guessing that uh, Maui Comic Con isn't going to be so quick to have Comics Cafe back as a guest this year. How about that, Alika? Yeah. How about that? How about that, Alika? <laughs> Remember, remember someone told you, remember someone told you that there, you know, maybe you could get some different guests and you threw a little yeah. tantrum. Remember who was that? Who was that guy? <laughs> was well, uh, I, I mean, that's all the news that unfortunately I have for right now. And of course, uh, like you guys have articulated, um, we don't want to assume anything until more information has come out, but I do think it's important that we at least recognize kind of what's going on and that there is something that may be happening that's in the works right now. Um, this is super unfortunate and you never want to see this happen. Uh, you know, and, um, it just feels like it, 
you know, continually there, there, there are events that happen like this more and more often now, but, uh, I guys, mean, I'm not saying, I'm yeah. not saying that like when you're a professional and you have like a young fan contact you and they like your, you know, they like your work or whatever, like, sure. I'm not saying you can't compliment their work that you can't like, you know, you can't even like, you know, mentor them in some ways, but you need to be aware of what's appropriate. And, uh, yeah. and this is well, obviously, you know, go ahead. John. Even if, I was going to say too, I mean that, you know, cause I was already thinking earlier and I was like, no, I'm not going to say it, but I mean, it's, it's fine for even the creator to compliment a young person's work. And I think that should exist. I think you need people who are, I, I think there are a lot of talented people that don't pursue things because they don't believe in themselves. So they don't have someone else saying they believe in them. I think telling young people that are talented or have potential that you do believe them is a really good thing to uh, imbue in the industry, but you've got to have boundaries and you've got to go about it the right way. And even when we say like, mm, I don't know, you know, what was the, the younger parties, you know, playing this, maybe they weren't so innocent. Mm -hmm. If you're the adult, you still have to understand that you're the adult and you should know better. Like, yeah, even absolutely. if they're coming at you, you should know to be like, uh, eh, I'm not going to, you know, go down this path. Let's, let's keep this don't... in the public, you know, and you can be complimentary without sounding flirty. You know, yeah, like, yes. that's a choice. Yeah, and what are you what are you yes. talking about, you naughty beard? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh man, well, I feel so uncomfortable. I've been groomed. Oh gosh. <laughs> last time I, I was gonna say last time I checked, you guys weren't asking for photos of him in a schoolgirl uniform, which I think Ed was asking or Ed was seeing. What what is that in there? Because I, I just think, sent yeah, my school I, I just sent my schoolgirl photos to Josh and Max voluntarily. They didn't ask. <laughs> well, I was going to say, Josh Dang, always lucky. tells... <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if you shut up once in a while, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, I was going to say, Josh asked me to get in my silkies all the time, so I don't know how, how to feel about that anymore. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if joke. I can We're send joking. DMs. And, and but... it's, not to, it's not to make light of the situation at all. but just, It's uh, you know, no. called gay privilege, Max. Where have you been? It's 2024. <laughs> Come on. This Ugh. is true. It's about time. I, yeah, right. it's about time. Thank you. Um, and if I don't date you, that actually makes me homophobic, right? Is that is that how that works now? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to confirm. So, if you're straight, you're not uh, allowed to have a preference. You're not allowed to be straight. <laughs> That's no, right. No. Yeah. So. Uh, but yes. Uh, we yeah. Uh, thank you for saying that. We don't want to make light of the situation, but we also know that uh, sometimes the best way to get through a lot of these darker scenarios is to laugh through it. A lot of the gallows humor. Um, and so, unfortunately, until we know more about what's going on, we can't speak too intelligently about it. But thankfully, a lot of these guys have already articulated, like I said, the the perfect points of, you know, that um, everything that comes with this scenario and and how unfortunate it is. So uh, we will move on. People, but, yeah. it, it does upset me, though, that people are attacking this girl like you don't know anything about her. You don't know anything right. about the situation. You know, you should always just take a wait and see approach. And, uh, you know, and I know like like it doesn't need to be said on, on our stream because all of our all of our uh, listeners are are good, uh, good people. And they're not going to go do stuff like that. But, you know, if you're just a random person in here and you're thinking of doing that, don't, don't, don't do that. What's the matter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you guys for, for, uh, like I said, this was kind of breaking news. So thanks for, for, you know, rolling with us here. Cause this was kind of improv that I had, um, some things to talk about. And then this news broke and I was like, Oh my God, this is, this is a massive news story right now. This kind of still in progress. So, uh, we will probably get more news here within the week, but, uh, man, it, yeah, like I said, it's not looking good, unfortunately. Um, but what is looking good is Drew's most recent project. And I wanted to share that here real quick before I forget. Um, so Drew, this is pray for the center number six, the conclusion. Uh, tell me about this bad, big bad boy, and I will put this in the, the the link in the chat so that people can go support you. Yeah, so uh, with th this is a uh, Marat Michaels character is his property, and uh, I've been working with Marat Michaels frequently over the last uh, almost two years now, and uh, most recently uh, within the last few months, he let me he's had me come on board to do some script polishing for his Pray for the Center properties. And he, this is one of the first ones I was able to get it my hands on. Pray for the center, and I was able to. He asked me, he gave me the script for issue six, had me do a script polish on it, and this I had so much fun working on this character. 
and working on this issue. This issue is action packed. Are there sexy covers? Yes. But are there, is there more to the story than just that? Absolutely. It is a, it is a, a it's just a kick-ass comic of her taking down the big baddie. One of the, if, the, the premise of the story of Pray for the Center, if you're not familiar with it, is pretty much I spit on your grave, but in space. And it's pretty much oh, her wow, getting. Okay. Yes. And uh, it's pretty much this issue. This conclusion is her getting the final revenge on the one of the last ones who uh, uh, don't want to spoil what happened in issue one. But yeah, one of the last guys. All right. Well, uh, I can see that she's beaten up Isom right here. So that's pretty. You guys are kind of crossing <laughs> worlds, which is pretty interesting. So. Uh, if you guys want to see, uh, was that the, was that the, was that the death blow? <laughs> <laughs> it sure looked like it. Uh, so, space but is it, it did not look like a chilled. <laughs> yes, it looked like a grown man or a grown woman. Uh, but it doesn't look like it looks like they are about to adapt or adapt or d. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and if you do not back this comic, you will either adapt or die. So, right. uh, or adopt, will... adopt, or adapt, or die. <laughs> I think adopt she, or die. I think she's supposed to say adapt, but it came out as adopt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, people should adopt. I'm, I'm in favor of that. Yeah. yeah. Or die, though. <laughs> <laughs> or die. I mean, it's but, a little extreme. But it's, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. But. Uh, but yeah, so go check out our good friend Drew Dolan's uh, script here on Pray for the Sinner Conclusion. And I'm sure that you can go over to Counterpoint Comics and get uh, one through five as well. Yep, uh, but I they're offering the back to... issues. Yep, they're offering oh, the back perfect. issues. And uh, there's going to be... Uh, there may or may not be more with this character in the future. That's all I got to say. That's all I can say. Is, there, is that a John Royal cover I saw in there? I believe that was a John Real cover. There, I think he maybe he's going to be doing one. Uh, it could have been Greg Bo Watson that you might have seen. Oh yeah, uh, he's that's doing true. one. Sora's doing one, and uh, Dietrich Smith did one. I think Murat's got one coming up soon. Hopefully, maybe eventually. But yeah, there's mm -hmm. uh, I think four or five out right now. And the Sora Sung one sold like gangbusters. Uh, she did a battle oh, damage oh, variant. And I can imagine. Most of those were gone. And she's she's been such a she's work. such a sweetheart. I have sort of a crush on her. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> she's so, like she's so nice that you're just like oh yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely very very talented uh but uh but yeah so thanks for allowing us to share that and uh yeah if you guys want to go check out another book by our our drew here go check it out and we will actually be talking about crowdfunding comics here within the next probably 30 minutes or so because i have a video for us to play that we're going to efap and then we're going to talk about crowdfunding oh. and the importance of crowdfunding, but also where we see some problems within the industry, within the crowdfunding space, and how we might be able to change that or fix that or, or you know, alleviate some of those issues. But before we uh, get Max, into uh, so so, yeah. real quick, I want to say, give a shout out to the chat. Uh, Shelby Robertson, famous, incredible inker Shelby Robertson is in the chat. And uh, yes, is uh, American Discord. And yes, Dietrich, what, he did the interior art and he did a cover. Oh, sweet. Oh, cool. Okay. So Thank Shelby, you so much for, nice yeah, thanks for hanging show. out, Shelby. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. He may or may not be working on a property or project involving that character. May or may not be coming out later this year. I can't say, but <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, very well. It's so hard. To, it's so hard to talk, not talk about these things when, when they look so damn awesome and you, you know, what's coming up. <laughs> just say, just right, say so NDA, Shelby. Drew. And you Shelby don't have to was say roommates anything. with Dietrich and Pat Lee. Oh, that must have been a fun. That must have been a fun place to hang out. All that mm, creativity I going can't. on. That's wild. Max, uh, do, you mind, yeah, just... uh, do you mind putting up uh, James Hurley's on there? I just want to address uh, James Hurley's. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, he said, "Hey Max, I'm out of the loop. Why people? Uh, why are people hating on Eric July? Uh, we're not. We're we like to just make fun of the Gyra trailer because it was um, it was Neil Breen level of uh, of kind of cringe. Um, so you know we have fun with that." Uh, so don't don't take it that we're hating on uh, on Eric, but um, just the simple answer for why people are hating on Eric July, because he's more successful than they are. He's putting out books and they're, he's making a lot of money, and so that's the main reason that people are hating on him. You know, there's people I, that there's people that can take issue with things that he says or things that he does and things like that, and there's people that give valid criticism. So yeah. you know, um, but there are a huge and and you know we've said that like, hey Eric, not everybody who has valid criticism for you is you know quote unquote a detractor. 
Um, you know, some mm -hmm. people who have valid criticism really want to see you succeed. Uh, but the fact is, he does deal with a lot of people who just hate the fact that he is making money and that he's doing really well and that they're not quite doing as well. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you've got, there, there are so many different aspects to this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there are individuals who are, you've got like individuals who are, who, who need to touch grass, frankly, right? You get, you get people who are really just kind of, uh, who have delved into the weeds here and they are just completely hating Eric July because of who he is, like as a person. Uh, they yep. just hate everything that he is. They hate his success. They hate him. And so they're going to attack anything that he does. You then have another group of people who are, I would probably say like more creators who see what he's doing as an offense to creativity. I think these people are the ones who are saying, Eric is not a creator. He's not a creative person. He acts like he is and he's a false prophet, right? He's preaching about business and creativeness and all these different things when he knows nothing about it. And I think those individuals who have been either in the industry for a while or have done this for a long time, see that and they go, I have to call this out because that's not fair for people to laud him and praise him when we've been doing this for decades and, and know more about this, you know, and, and I, and I think those creators have every right to say what they need to say. Right. Uh, and then you get people who, yes, are jealous, who are frankly just envious of his success, jealous of his success, and they want to see him fail. Um, so, and, and there are plenty of other little factions yeah. and bubbles of, you know, uh, like, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, was, I was just going to say, I, I think the, the other major factor is what we talked about on Tuesday night. He just needs to learn that he doesn't have to uh, respond to everything and that sometimes responding mm. only hurts what he's trying to do. And, and Salty's right. Uh, the product is not the best. And, you know, it, there you mentioned the professionals. There are a lot of professionals that stepped up to try to give constructive criticism from a, you know, positive place. And he didn't necessarily handle that in the best light. And, uh, I, you know, I mean, you, you got to roll with the punches. But if people are trying to help you out, especially when, when you've called out other products for, for years, take take the advice, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but take the advice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've offered to I've offered to do editorial more than once, you know, for for not just for Eric, but for a, a bunch of these crowd funders. You know, it's like, hey, you guys, your story needs help. Let me help. I'm not expensive. Yeah. You know, I will only make your product better. And you know, the thing is, I'm not, you know, you don't offer editorial services, at least I don't, with the thought of like, I want to radically alter what you're doing. I want to find the good stuff that you're doing, zero in on that. And, you know, and it doesn't have to be me, but just please get somebody. Please get somebody. Who's good. <laughs> somebody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anybody. Uh, and, I, and I think this is a good point, Zach. And I think this is why so many fans of his, you know, like for me, like me, for example, I have always been a fan of Eric's. Uh, I like his videos. I think I, I like his industry takes. I think that he has really interesting takes on the industry itself. Uh, when he was taught, when, you know, upcoming to his uh, ISOM release, I was really excited about the book. I was really excited about Ripperverse in general. So I'm a, I'm a fan of Eric. Um, but then when I say, oh, I, I don't really care to read ISOM 3, or maybe Yara is not my thing, I'm then called a detractor. Right. So and and this is where we kind of see this like, wait a second, that sounds familiar. Right. Like, you know, and and I'm not saying that it, it is Eric directly, but I know that a lot of people within this space who are Eric fans will say, oh, if you don't like this book, you're a detractor or you're oh. arguing in bad faith or something. I, you know, I think like, we can all agree that our conversation Tuesday night for, for my stream was yeah. as balanced and softball as we could have been on the topic. And I still Very have calling us detractors in the comments <laughs> it's like really? did you really oh i gotta go look at the comments no, it, it was just wow it, it i gotta just, go fight yeah. in josh's comments <laughs> with people <laughs> i was like no, come on man yeah. like uh we, yeah no people really people are gonna people but again and just learn you yeah. don't always have to respond which is why i didn't respond and guys stop being so tribalist like you know just <laughs> Yeah. Just have a little critical thinking, have a little nuance, you know, what, what, what's, why is it like, everybody is so quick to be like, this is my side until it's not their side anymore. That person does one thing to piss them off. And then all of a sudden it's not their side. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, you see this all the time in, in crowdfunding. And this is why I don't, uh, 
you know, I'm not part of any any movement or uh, part of any of these uh, these groups or these cliques. It's like I, I just don't want to be involved in any of your drama at all. Um, yeah, and and I think that you know what you guys have said is we have every time we've talked about this, Kyle and Drew, even when we talk about it on our Friday night show, um, even when we are voicing our opinion and and being very very so, sometimes softball but you know Kyle I think you've probably been the hardest on some of his stuff and even still it's not nearly as bad as some other people um we do so with a very objective lens and we do so with a lot of good quote unquote good faith uh we don't stand to gain from hating or liking his book and i think that's what's most important what people have to realize is i don't have a million subs i don't get paid a million dollars to like or hate his book uh, we're here to try and give as best objective criticism as possible within the comic book industry. And that's what we try and do. And like you said, Josh, on your channel, more than any of ours, you know, that conversation was extremely tame. We were very, very softball, like you said. Yeah, uh, I've been uh, I've been way less tame. There are reasons why we're <laughs> tame Tuesday night in particular. But uh, I because you mentioned Kyle's been the hardest. I'm like, mm, I, I feel like some of my comments could give Kyle a run for his money. Kyle, what do you think? <laughs> I, I let's keep in mind I'm the one that during one stream was like, man, never mind, never mind, carry on. <laughs> Josh, no, you're starting no, to sound a lot his, like a no, detractor. His books, do suck. his books suck. They're not good. <laughs> like, and that's okay. Good. But that's okay. It's his first time. If you just came yeah. out and said, listen, this is my first time doing this. I don't know quite what i'm doing yet i will get better promise me i will bring on top talent i will have them mentor me so it will become better this is a first step take it easy and it's like okay just, fine but don't, when you yeah don't let, don't let those people be the saska sisters that would probably help yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm curious i'm curious how the i'm curious how the book is gonna go like i, I you know like i am curious about, about reading the yaira book um i haven't backed it but you know i am curious about the final product uh, i'm sure because of the Zosca I, sisters i'm sure they're gonna take it like a chomp <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't. there we go have you read That's the black widow book i have not been able to find it have you guys read it i think drew's oh. read it right yeah i didn't oh. like it yeah. I we, we yeah I read it a few years it every it came out like oh my god like four years ago I think yeah, yeah, yeah. was it that far yeah I guess twenty twenty was, was like twenty yeah twenty 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 nineteen yeah it's right right around there yeah uh yeah I um I I have not read it unfortunately but uh, I I would be very interested in it um so I think Dick and Vito began to criticize him but Dick actually read the book and highlighted a very detailed thorough review of the book regardless of whether eric believed that it was good faith or bad faith uh dick did read the book and give a thorough review of it um and like i said take that for what you will but i did i do believe he went over almost all his criticisms live um so there's that uh and salty i believe it's horseman so I want to make sure that we, we get that. I would Not love it if it was horseman. I don't know why, because I could with, <laughs> it could go with, with good goodying. Good guys. Good goodying. Hor ho horseman? Like we all know it's horsey man. Like it's a strong well, if it's, E. Strong if it's Batman man. or it's Batman. Well in, oh. in do in Neil before Doomface, you're gonna meet the horsey gang. Oh, <laughs> so right. I'm, are they jockeys? Right. I'm up in the, up in the ante. <laughs> that would actually be hilarious if they're all jockeys. They're all like these, like four foot ten tiny. Guys. Yeah, <laughs> that they are. Why are you guys giving it away? You're oh no, you're getting it. It's great. NDA, 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 NDA. Yeah, Aaron. So tell us about your book. Oh, NDA. No, <laughs> no. Like, what's what's it about? NDA. I can't say. I can't say, but it's your book. You own it. Yeah, NDA. NDA. I signed an NDA with myself. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't, like, you're not breaking any laws. It's your, your characters. NDA, sorry. I did okay. sign some NDAs this week, so. Oh, yeah. good. Very nice. Uh, you know, so we've been talking about being very fair and balanced and, and really saying that we are fans of Eric and we want him to succeed. Uh, you know, we criticize Marvel and DC incessantly because what they're doing 
is they're attacking fans. They're destroying our characters. They're lecturing and pandering to an, a one percent of the audience and trying to tell all of us that we are bad if we don't, you know, enjoy what they're the slop that they're putting out. All of this stuff, right? But we also have to uh, we also have to offer our fair and balanced criticism towards those within the industry who are also trying to compete with Marvel and DC. And um, I wanted to bring this up because this had me pretty furious because as people who, like, like we've said earlier on in the stream, I feel like we have, we have come at this as good faith as possible, as genuine and authentic as possible where we say we want Eric to succeed because we we want a parallel economy. Uh, we would love to see more creators in this industry succeed. Uh, however, when something like this happens, this makes my blood boil because it makes me so it makes it so much more difficult for me to support someone who is laughing, laughing at the individuals who support him. Uh, especially for people who may not know kind of what's going on within like the drama of the Ripaverse stuff, but, um, yellow flash, uh, I'll, I'll play this clip. It's only two minutes long. This is from Katie did's channel. So shout out to her for getting this clip, but stuff like this makes me livid when the people who are supporting him are the, the, the brunt of the joke, you know, the, the laughing stock, this is the equivalency of dunking on the chuds, right? But in this sphere of influence. So I'll play the clip and then we'll EFAP it and we'll talk about it right after. My favorite merchandise. Is yeah, one. that's my favorite too. I was talking about this earlier. This is my favorite. I fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do something. You've inspired me <laughs> with this. So for when I do mine, I'm for sure going to do like a pay your artist. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, gotta think, I was talking to him about it the other day so we're gonna do something like that and uh have a uh, maybe like the main character handing him some money or something <laughs> we're working on yeah. it this, this was fun it's actually selling like it's selling really well man people people a lot of in, in on the inside joke is uh they getting a kick out of it shout out kane and kane did that he did all I he did both that. shirts he did the, the both posts as well i bought that one and i also bought the one you put out last time the What's your favorite part? Oh, what's your favorite part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, too. That's a good one, too. Have a go. Troll. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. The pay your artist shirt is coming. <laughs> and he's going to get paid from it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we it, it, This is all around been a fun campaign, man. Just um, Yeah, it's been a real fun campaign, dunking on your chuds, huh? So this is what gets me upset. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the 3D asset shirt, is trying to make fun of people who levied the criticism of, hey, there are really stagnated, st uh, uh, stifled uh, artwork. There's there's really terrible artwork in your book. And it seems like it's being pulled from a website with 3D assets on it. Can you kind of elaborate and tell us what's kind of going on here? And instead of addressing the criticism, he said, oh, well, all artists do that. Uh, you know, Alex Ross, the great creator of our time has always sketched things from 3D assets. What are you talking about? So my artist, if he did that, it's, you know, whatever. He put out a whole video about it. And then he made a shirt to try and dunk on the detractors or dunk on the haters. And now Yellow Flash is getting in on this and making a shirt to dunk on his haters saying, oh, pay your artists. But the thing is, you should, you should freaking pay your artists, you dumbasses. Why is that dunking uh, on your fan? Like you're dunking on your own fans. Like this is why it makes it so infuriating for me. Because yes, I know you're trying to troll people who are who are throwing these criticisms at you, but they are legitimate criticisms from people who want to see you succeed. You dumb assholes. Yeah, I was gonna say so, there's a way. Yeah. There's a way you can be cheeky with this type of stuff without being a total asshat to your fans. So, yeah. for instance, if they came out with the Ira shirt that said something like "Adopt or Die" or, uh, you know, she's sweet holding, she's holding you, a bunch well, of babies. Yeah, yeah like, or you know, or something like that. Like that would be cheeky. Like that's you owning you would made something that wasn't great. The problem is with the the whole 3D assets thing. They try to act like it's it's you know. Yeah, oh, well, everyone's doing this in comics. And a lot of people do use 3D assets. And I'll look at Mikhail Yanin, who, who 
did Batman, you know, under Tom King and uh, has worked on a number of books. He uses 3D assets, but then he goes in and he he alters it and changes it and puts his own art into it. Yeah. You know, it is something different. This was like a drag and drop, like copy, paste, yeah. copy, paste, copy, paste. And that's that's insulting. So then to come out and make a shirt making fun of it. It, it, it's just it's the wrong way to approach it and and look no offense but yellow flash coming out and fucking being like oh pay your pay your artists I, that's anyone that has any self-respect or self-dignity would choose not to work with him after he acts like this i hope so man not just, well, not just yeah. that after him outing outing ethan van scabbers page right blasting yeah, it out it. there on twitter Dude. without right that is permission or approval and yeah that's bullshit and that that is one of the big things that like that is a huge industry no go. That is a party foul num numero uno. You do not share these these artist pay rates uh, or page rates. Um, and so the the three D assets thing, I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to do the um, uh, what was the first shirt again? Oh, uh, what was your favorite part of ISOM? Because you had people on Twitter that were saying. Uh, hey, what's your favorite part of ISOM? Knowing full well that no one read the book or those people didn't read the book. So for that, I, I, I get I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to monetize the haters, which is what he's done on his YouTube channel. So he's just trying to do that with the shirt. But now it's become, it's mocking its fans. And that's what's so frustrating about this. And uh, like you said, Josh, if if Yellow Flash is trying to now do this by like, you know, oh, pay your artists. And he's like, oh, he is going to get paid. He's going to get 40% on the back end of whatever you make on your campaign. But who's to say that you're now going to make money from your campaign when people don't want to support you anymore? So now you're taking money out of that artist's pocket. You know what I mean? So it's like, gosh, dang, man, this is so frustrating. And for these guys to think that they're dunking on the chuds or, or dunking on the detractors, you're, you're only hurting your fan base. I, you're I got only news separating for you. more people. Everything mm -hmm. that you think you're doing with this dunking on the chuds is no different than the way the mainstream pros feel when they insult their fans, when they insult yeah. the fans of those books. They feel just as justified. They feel just as righteous. So what's really the difference? You know, explain it to me because I don't know what it is. I don't see yeah. a difference between the two. And I'm not above a good troll and I'm not above getting salty with somebody that comes in and, uh, you know, starts, uh, starts throwing punches. You know, it's like, I, I'll be nice until it's time not to be nice. And then I'll, you know, I'll put down an a-hole, you know, when they come in. But, uh, you know, for the most part, like you don't, you don't go out there and antagonize an entire group of people that have legitimate criticisms. Right. Bad and faith. <laughs> no. He's moving differently. He's moving. Bad faith either. or good faith. Yeah. I also want to go on record that while Aaron might like a good troll, I think they are deplorable human beings and I do not conduct trolling. <coughs> oh, of course not, Josh. <laughs> no, I've never seen that. Josh. I've no. never seen Josh trolling. Never. never. No, <laughs> never. Never. Ever. never. Um, um, it also. Look, it, look, you're talking oh, to yeah, a guy yeah. who, who's making fun of dynamite. I've got a shirt. That uh, you know has like the CM Punk logo, but with Darkwing's crossed arms with the gas guns. That says "Best in the World," and uh, and then on the back it says "Sparrow Silvani, We've been the best since day one. I have that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I will wear that to cons. I will wear that to a dynamite panel. I will go into a dynamite <laughs> panel with a bullhorn and sit on the floor and do the entire CM Punk speech, but relating to Silvani and I being the best in the world. I oh have gosh. no problem doing that. So, you know, I understand a good troll, but you don't turn it on the fans. That's that's aimed at bad decision making within a company and nepotism within a company and, you know, people uh, engaged in cronyism within a company and, and a company not caring about the final product. Just it's just a vehicle for covers to be slapped onto. That's trolling a company. That's not turning mm -hmm. around and spitting in the face of the fans. Yeah, it, it, it and this feels much more like the what would that be the the latter uh, which is, it feels more like it's just like taking a piss on everything that we are trying to legitimately and authentically say in good faith. Um, because Josh, I think we were talking about like, uh, or actually was it on this stream that we talked about good faith and bad faith? Or I think it was our Friday night show. Um, uh, yeah. it was one of these where we discussed like, what is good faith and what is bad faith? And, um, we came to the conclusion that like, 
whether it's good faith or bad faith, it can still be constructive criticism. Correct. However, bad faith is when you are knowingly lying about something. Correct. Whereas good faith is actually coming about it from a truthful, authentic position. Correct. Um, and I think what is bad faith about Ma3D assets is that even if Eric knows that the artist was using SketchUp, because here's the guys and I, we were talking about this on one of our Friday nights back in the day uh, for 48 years ago or whenever we did this stream. Um, one of the things that seems a little bad faith is that these are like legitimate things that have been proven that were used in the book. And whether it was sketched or not, it seems a bit lazy. And if Ripaverse is going to, what's the word, uh, elevate itself to a position of Marvel in DC, if it's going to try and compete with the big two, it needs to be better than that. And I, and I hope that it's better than that because I don't want to see this shit, right? Like no one wants to see that this building is the same building that was pulled from SketchUp. Like go out, take a picture, be like a lot of these other artists who are taking their references from actual buildings in life and then referencing the, from that photo, right? Um, so, and I think that's what Eric was trying to say in his video when he was talking about this artist stuff. But here's the 3D asset, right? And then the previous one, that it is what showed up in the book. So you so, just rotate, rotate the asset a little bit, get an angle, and then yep. plop it in. So it's not like we're we're trying to lie and say, oh, well, you know, you 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 did this, and there's no proof of of you know SketchUp being used. It's the fact that we've seen this, we we you know shared our criticism, but instead of you taking that and going, you know what, hey, you're right, we we want to be better than that, so we're not going to use that anymore. He made a damn shirt about it to, to, and now people are buying it. And I, I think someone in the chat said they don't even realize that what they're buying is making fun of themselves. It, yeah. I, I was going to say that there for a second. And then I was like, uh, I, I started to make the comment. We have discussed about, um, some aspects of these audiences and it's not just Eric's audience. It's comic fans in general, the people that you see at conventions and, and, you know, they don't even understand they're being made fun of and they don't understand that they're supporting someone making fun of them. And I'll just, I'll leave it at that to, to not completely start fires, but yeah. And Max, I'll even say that clip you just showed is, is a, is a like relatively safe or decent example of them using 3d assets. There, there were some that were just, just piss poor in that book. So, Oh, ripped straight. Like, like, like you said, drag and drop, man. I mean, what weren't even twisted a little bit. The angle was the same. You know, they didn't even take things out or put things in. It was just like, like you said, drag and drop. Uh, like, that was just one example. Draw a fucking lamp in a goddamn room, you dumbass. <laughs> like, are you that fucking lazy? Is he not paying you? Then I could be like, hey, Eric July's not fucking paying me. I'm just going to do this for free. And this is what he's treating me like. Okay, fine. I buy that. <laughs> but it's like, uh -huh. come on, dude. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, he's probably paying pretty well. So like, I would yeah. think so. Yeah. But see, so this like... is something again, Kyle, you're absolutely right. This is something that even if you're paying the artist, you know, like Eric, okay, let's give Eric the benefit of the doubt. Eric is not a professional comics creator. So when his artist is using 3D assets and just plopping them in there and being lazy and Eric's paying him a page rate, expecting him to draw it, Eric, you don't have to defend that. If you would have mm. hired an editor, an experienced editor, they would have said, hey, your artist is using drag and drop, you know, uh, 3D <laughs> assets. You might not want to, you, know, you might want to actually have them draw it out. Yeah. 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 But, but like he didn't recognize it because he's not a professional editor. He hasn't done this. He's just, you know, he's been a pop culture commentator on comics. Yeah. And like we said, that's okay. If he didn't recognize it, that's fine but don't be making 3d asset shirts trying to dunk on detractors. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, right. you know, recognize that they're, Hey, I made a mistake. I did not realize that those were 3d assets. I, I apologize. Um, you know, the, the literal website sketchup has all this stuff and I see that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put him on a different book or we're just going to take him off the book entirely and, and take him out of the, the running for artists. And we're going to use someone else. We're going to have Kane and white become our full-time artist or something, mm -hmm. like something, right? You got to make didn't even have to throw businesses. the artist under the bus. You could have taken it all on yourself. You could have said in my inexperience, 
I did not recognize it. And therefore I did mm-hmm. not tell him that we didn't want him to do that for the book. So it's on me. Yeah. And that's and like, sometimes... that's like a very like leadership kind of move. That's what Dan DiDio would always do. You know, one of his people got in trouble and he'd be like, Oh, well it's on me. Yeah. You know, he would always like take that criticism for whatever you think of Dan DiDio, he would always shield his talent and Agreed. he would take any, any screw ups on himself. And you know what that does? It endears us to that leader. Like it makes us yeah. love them more. Like w- when someone takes the the hit and you're watching that dude take the hit for you, damn, man, you were like, I would follow this dude into hell, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he could have done that and he didn't. Instead, he chose to mock the fans. And, and what do we all, our whole channels are built off of this premise, right? And it's like, gosh, dang it, man. Um, but even more so, like I said, if Yellow Flash is going to try and, and follow suit, Yellow Flash, what are you doing, dude? Uh, now, Dillard did say that he had no problem with the pay agreement, uh, that he signed the agreement, and that he was on board for it. However, um, I don't know if he's done this before, um, and I think that Yellow Flash put him in a really bad spot. And I think yeah. Yellow Flash, the one with the, the responsibility here as the main like creative head of, of this book I, I think it would have been safer for him to pay him by page uh, because if this book does not succeed, which I'm sure it will because Yellow Flash is like 300,000 subscribers or whatever, but if it doesn't Dillard is going to be in the hole again he's already had had uh, family um, family trouble. He's already had housing trouble with floods and all kinds of different things where he can't pay uh, for a lot of these things, and and um, it, it just it just sucks that he's being put in this situation now where there are going to be people who may not back Flash's book because of his actions, and now Dillard is going to have to pay the consequence for that when it shouldn't be his fault at all. So. Yeah, and we talked about this when it happened, you know, and I made the comment like if this is a situation. Personally, I believe if you were in this type of situation and you cause circumstances that could severely hinder someone getting paid based on the agreement that you set up because of your own actions, then at Mm -hmm. that point, just out of integrity, you owe that person something up front um, or some type of renegotiation. Um, My question is, whose idea was it? Whose Mm -hmm. idea was it that, you know, was it? presented to dillard like you'll get more money on the back end and he felt pressured to take it or did dillard come into the thing saying like you know what i feel like this book will do really good what if you don't pay me up front and you give me more money on the back end or you pay me a stipend or anything at that point i still think it's incumbent upon you as the creator of the book the person who stands to gain the most who owns the property i think it's still incumbent upon you to say like okay well you know we can work out a you know an arrangement on the back end but you're still Mm going to get a page rate so that you can pay your bills while you're doing this you know maybe it's the maybe it's a smaller page rate you know because you're going to make more on the back end you know there's going to be bonuses and things like that you know and and you're gambling on yourself but at that but you know that that needs to all be laid out yeah i I would i would assume it's probably a little bit of both i'm I'm sure yellow flash Mm -hmm. you know may have approached dillard and been like hey i want to use you but i can't pay you up front and they probably worked this out um but again you know this no, no matter how successful this book is, it would have been more successful if it had EVS pushing it. And I'm not saying that to, to like shill EVS. It's just it would have reached more audiences. And there are people yeah. that are going to support something because EVS is telling or asking them to. And don't no. be mad at EVS because he didn't take the same deal. Don't you know, be mad at him and dump his page rate online because he didn't take the same deal. You know, EVS mm-hmm. knows EVS. EVS knows what he's worth. Mm-hmm. And I've I've asked him on multiple. You know, I've had clients who've said like, you know, hey, you know, think it's possible to get an EVS cover? And I reached out and I knew what his page rate was because he had given me his page rate. And they had said like, wow, is that that seems high? And I said it's high, but it's you know you're going to get results. You're going to get results mm-hmm. yes. because he's going to talk about it to his audience that he did a cover for this book. Whether he has whether he promotes your book or not, he's going to promote himself as having done a cover for it, and that's going to get eyes on your product. And his audience is going to you know a certain percentage of his audience will go and buy it. So you're going to make more than you're paying EVS, you know, uh, if you have any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of presence or, or can, you know, make any kind of money on your book. Um, that is going to be your probably your best selling cover. What's interesting, I, I think it was Eric's best selling cover when he released I Psalm 2. Um, it was. What I was going to say, yeah. 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 Uh, I was going to say, too, even if, like, say we had Dillard on the show and we were like, hey, man, 
could, could, could you kind of walk us through this whole thing? Like no judgment. We just want to listen to you and we just want to hear what happened, right? Like what, what was the agreement here? How did it come about? I know Dillard's a good enough dude to where he would never throw yellow flash under the bus. And because he also wants to work in the comic book industry. So if it's like same thing with me, you know, if a, if a former or if a new boss is, is looking to hire me and they're like, how was your old boss? And I'm like, um, eh, they were, they were kind of crappy. You know, I didn't like working for, it's like, why, why is that person then going to hire me within the same industry? So I think Dillard is, is doing the right thing by, I don't want to say protecting uh, no, yellow flash, but he's think, trying to, yeah, I think he's being professional. Did, yes. Dillard did yeah. the right thing in calling off the dogs. Cause people were giving yellow flash shit for not paying his artists, yeah. but it, it, you know, they came to that agreement, you know, and whatever yeah. that looked like in terms of building that agreement, Dillard is coming from the stance of this is what we agreed to. I'm not going to cause a scene. It's not fair for people to attack him because he's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. It's mm -hmm. not his fault that I'm in the circumstances I'm in. So, you know, it, it, it's, he, he took the, the high road and, and I think did the right thing. Uh, and again, that's where I was saying, if yellow flash had more integrity at this point, I think he would have said, I'm going to pay you or I'm going to do a, B and C because of mm -hmm. a, B and C. Um, yeah. I think Dillard said that he did offer. I, I do remember that him saying yes. that when, when 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 he was started to go through you know hardships and things like that. Yellow Flash yeah. did say like you know well you know can I give you some money can I you know can I pay you something? Um, he did say that so um, you know it did come back around. I don't want to um, not not being involved in the situation. I don't want to like get too in the realm of of condemning people. We're just kind of like condemning different scenarios here um, because we don't know the whole story. We don't know every aspect of it. But, right. you know, we're, what we're saying is like, if it was this, then this is wrong. If it was this, this is wrong. Right. If it was Correct. this, you know, this is the right way to do it. For sure. Yeah. And, and I hope that uh, I hope that this all gets situated. The, the thing that makes me upset, though, is that like I would want to talk to Dillard and say, hey, how do you feel about Yellow Flash making a shirt saying pay your artists? You know what I mean? Like e even that feels like just feels poor taste. And, like it just feels really lousy and, and kind of gross. And it's like, yeah, I, I get it. You're trolling, haha, -ha, funny. But like, seriously, like, pay your artists. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not like a joke that I feel like is substantiated by trolling people. It just seems in poor taste. And I, I don't know. Maybe Dillard's like, yeah, I think well, it's, it's hilarious. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's the thing. It's so. it's a it's something that you should do. Yeah, it's just oh gosh. <laughs> it's it's like, like anybody who doesn't know about any of this drama, and let's face it, that is almost everybody in the world. Yes, absolutely. You know, if a guy's walking around with a shirt where somebody's handing somebody money and it says pay your artist, if they're an artist, they're gonna be like, Hey, right on, man. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think it's like solid, you know, solidarity. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh l love your neighbor. It's like cool. Yeah, like yeah. you think of it, Victoria Alonzo wears a shirt that says be nice to your VFX artists. And people don't know who oh, they are. And they're they're going to yeah. be like, they're you know, they're going to think they're going to go, oh, she's trolling, you know, yeah. or they're or are they going to look at it and go like, yeah, you should pay your VFX artists. Or don't uh, <laughs> yeah yeah don't overwork your VFX artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Josh, is that all? I've been paying you way more to get on the on the, these streams <laughs> with you. Damn. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I have a, I have an update to our previous topic if you guys want to hear it. Oh, you do. All right, okay. sir. Uh, oh, yeah. Please, uh, I will bring up the. Uh, I'll see if I can pull up the uh, the slide. But yeah, please go 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 on ahead if you have some more info. Just apparently, weaponized uh, weaponized autism is uh, is in full effect, and uh, now on Reddit, screenshots are showing up of uh, Piscor liking all the all of Molly's high school pics while she was still in high school. Interesting. Mm. Mm. So it's a little, you know, it's just, so, it's getting, it's just getting a, just getting a little weirder, a little weirder. Well, he's a fan of high yeah. school. That's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's hey, like, is, you, is, keep, is, you keep getting your education. You keep getting that education, girl. Is that is that homeroom <laughs> that you're walking towards? I love homeroom. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a new Red Room book. It's about high school. Oh, no. oh God! <laughs> it all makes oh, sense no. now. Uh... I gotta compete with Lovesick. It's so good. Oh no! Oh, we all know how sweaty we get while reading Lovesick. So I'm oh, coining yeah. a new phrase right now: Kyle Traversy. Oh. <laughs> well, that—that's what it just needs to be—a Kiel Traversy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
You know what's so funny? I <laughs> cause more controversy speak? on my channel than Kyle does. People in the comments are like, we love Kyle. Kyle is right. Jim Lee is the best. <laughs> I'm like, what, what is going on? <laughs> oh, speaking of Kyle and Keel, do you have what Mark Bagley did for you? Do you want to show that off? Oh, I do. I was going to oh, wait until yes. next week to show it off. You can you can wait till next week, Keel. It's all good. Yeah, I'll wait. Because I know we normally you tend wait. to do our, oh. our like comic talk uh you know stuff on friday I, so i hate to build this build the suspense but oh yeah that's it's gonna it's it's good oh it's definitely <laughs> is a it kind of like, one of one. <laughs> oh boy is it kind of like what donny cates did yeah kind of yeah kind yeah of. it's around that same vein okay. uh mike has bad knees this is a good question what's more valuable being on what is essentially a salary or having ownership stake um I don't know, panel. What do you guys think? I'll let you guys take this one because I've been talking my, I've been yapping my jaw. So, um, yeah. What, what do you guys think about this? Uh, I'll say this: a lot of times, if you are a larger name, you have a little bit of both. You have your salary, you have your page rate, whatever it might be, and then your your bonuses kind of come into like the ownership stake of it. Because, it, like, I, when all said and done, the ownership stake is set up like a bonus. It it's how it's set up. Um, I, if if you're new and you haven't done products before, I would say go salary. But yeah, it depends on depends largely on your it on your personal situation and your individual yeah. circumstances. Yeah, uh, Kelsey says both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. if you can. Um, well, speaking of uh, being, you know, on salary or, or ownership sake or making money in comics let's hear from the man himself and uh see what it actually means uh to make money in comics and what that actually looks like so this uh video has resurfaced uh because a couple of people within the crowdfunding industry brought this to people's attention uh on twitter uh this was from five months ago so it's an older video but um it, it got brought up in it got circulated and essentially what Eric is talking about here is how I think at this point he had released ISOM number one and he began to talk about how he has made his success within the comic book industry. Um, and so I wanted to go through this just, just the first few minutes because, you know, I have friends, you guys are all friends of mine who have been within crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, we know Murphy who is now her primary job, her source of income is, consulting on mm -hmm. crowdfunding, you know, uh, projects. And I think it's awesome. I mean, to get people who have, who have never entered the comic book space before get into crowdfunding and share their art, uh, in this way, I think is beautiful. However, I think Eric might see it a little bit differently. So I thought we'd play this a little bit and, and kind of get y'all's takes. Um, so this is uh, making money in comics from Eric July from about five months ago. Riververse Publishing, which has already produced two multi-million dollar comic book campaigns. And I realized that there are a million videos and write-ups about how to draw and write comics, but there are hardly any that give you insight on the business side. This video, I guess in some way, will be the first of its kind and it will be full of harsh reality, so be prepared. Many won't like what I have to say, but do understand that I say all of this because I want the industry to thrive. You cannot find solutions to problems without first admitting that they exist. The crux of what we'll be addressing in this video and series is making money in comics. I'm not speaking to those that treat it like a passion project only and think it's normal to be dirt poor. I'm also not speaking to those that are just doing this part time with another job subsidizing. So I think he's kind of like he's he's referencing like if you're like mags and you have like nine dollars in your bank account, you probably shouldn't be. You should probably have a day job, right? Like this is a <laughs> passion project, quote unquote, for you. Right. This is uh, a hobby. It's a hobby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a hobby. I think that's what he's trying to say here. Um, is that is that fair? That kind yeah, of that's fair. Next. I think that, that's how I you, took it. You act like Mags regularly goes on social media begging people for money so she can go buy like <laughs> guitars and you know stuff. And, hey, and we eat and pizza. Uh, no, you, you're, you're right, Josh. I, I should have said Danny Lore, who definitely doesn't promote her. Uh, what is it? Her not her GoFi. Her GoFi. Co her GoFi. Yes. Who's just, it's it's not even a GoFundMe project for something. It's just give me money. <laughs> she's like, she's like, Oh, it's just, it's overdraft Monday. And I'm like, how old are you? How old yeah. are you? That's a great I haven't point. had a check bounce since I, since I was in my early twenties. Yeah. <laughs> like when I was a dumb kid who didn't know what the hell I was doing. Like, aren't you an adult? Don't you have a wife? 
Are yes. you both morons? <laughs> yes. Yes to all. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll play a little bit more of this. We're talking about making a living in comics. Right now, two very key things are happening right now in comic books. For starters, people are beginning to finally admit the economic problems that plague this industry. Creatives are broke and are complaining about pay from legends to newbies, and it doesn't matter if you're working with an indie or the big dogs. You're getting paid very little or you're getting paid very late, or both. The other thing is that people are also realizing there's alternatives now. Crowdfunding, for example, has decentralized the means. That's great, but in some ways it's a problem. People that are in over their heads and have no business bone in their body are trying to be publishers and they have no idea what they're doing. This has So this is This where is why we have Murphy. This is where Murphy comes in. This is where I will yeah. gladly pay Murphy her hundreds of dollars. Uh, I don't want to say the exact amount, but I paid her a lot of money and yeah. uh, it was worth every cent. So Do you, do you think she do you think she'd take blessing. something on the back end? You think that maybe I could work that out with her? yeah right i don't know how that works and you know i'll barter with her i'll trade i'll trade service i'll, I'll trade uh you know editorial <laughs> services for uh <laughs> do you do trades and services um that's right do, do, have, do, do you need some interesting we can trades barter? interesting <laughs> trades accepted and i think this is what's so ironic about this video it, well it's aged poorly now because now yellow flash and eric are like ha ah, ha pay your artist ha 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 isn't that funny and it's like yeah it's not funny because it's like yeah pay your artist right well do we um, know like, that do we know that yellow flash has a you know a business bone in his body like is he going to be able to <laughs> publish this and and like and that is why i think he's going to use rip ascend which hey you know to, to those people who want to use rip ascend by all means i think it is a, a beautiful platform that i really hope succeeds because it will give a lot of people an opportunity to sell their books uh and do so probably at a great value hopefully but um, that's that's what I think is happening. I wonder if Eric is saying, you know, hey, normal publishing through Marvel and DC is crap. Crowdfunding, you never get your books. And it's by boneheaded idiots who don't know how to do business. You should use me, right? And I, and I don't want to think that it's that sinister. But I, is, I, I, I do think that he is kind of saying something to the effect of, Listen, these previous archaic models of publishing and distributing are not working. This is what we need to do from here on out, which is rip ascend. Um, I give him points for trying to enter uh, to innovate. I award absolutely. no points oh, yeah. for the name for the name rip ascend when Shipaverse was right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah rip ascend just sounds like you're you know ripping a raunchy fart and then sending it to Ooh. your customer. <laughs> Send it across the room. Uh, yeah. Get ready Ripping for my rip off. ascend. Yeah. <laughs> Seal it. Seal it. Oh, God. It makes that little noise of an email leaving. You know that. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> we so, are uh, idiots. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I do think that it's a little, it's, it's a little disingenuous, I think, to say that all of these crowdfunding publishers and, and crowdfunding dudes are, are, complete boneheads when it comes to business. Uh, like your boy, Zach, probably at the beginning of his whole journey, what a debt over a decade ago. Absolutely. He probably didn't know how to send books, but now he's probably gotten a lot better at it and probably knows how to work the system, not work the system, but do a better job with the whole crowdfunding yeah. thing. Right. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll play a little bit more. It's called extremely late campaigns and unfulfilled promises. Worse. Some now have access to more money than they've ever seen in their lives and they end up spending it on everything else but the project. That's unfortunate because now many customers are weary of the crowdfunding aspect. Comics are operating on an old, broken, and archaic model. Unfortunately, some people offer input on things they're completely ignorant on, which brings me to my first point. Stop listening to your favorite comic book creatives when it comes to business. 99% of them are not publishers, nor are they... Oh, sorry. Hold on. I want to no, replay my, that my last favorite. Part my favorite comic book creator has successfully shipped his books. Yeah. I was going to say, that's yeah. a, I would not listen to what Eric July just said there. <laughs> that's not 100% again, not 100% true. I mean, just, just again, come out and say like, yeah. don't listen to Ethan Van Skyver. Cause that's what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. much. That's all he's going after. He's going favorite. after him. And, and I don't like even my favorite, like even if Mark Silvestri did a crowdfunding comic today, I still wouldn't listen to Mark Silvestri about his business sense on how he crowdfunded the, the book 
but I would listen to Mark Silvestri on his creative aspect of how he draws or how he does a story. Like when I met him in Dallas two years ago, I didn't ask him, Hey, how did you publish your book through Marvel and DC? I just said, Hey, tell me about how you wrote the story for Batman, Joker, Deadly Duo. And he's like, Oh, this has been in the works for a while. So I, I'm not really listening to creators on their business sense. Right. I don't know. And yeah, if they do get their books out on time, like Rini has never had a book that was not fulfilled or I got all my books on time. Uh, Aaron Lepresti, beautiful books, all on time, all shipped great within Gemini mailers and everything. So it's like, there are people who can do it very successfully. So, I mean, I don't know, but, uh, th but yeah, I want to play this last part one more time comic book creatives when it comes to business 99 percent of them are not publishers nor are they businessmen they've been contractors their entire lives and the only thing most of them know is the system that currently exists there's nothing inherently wrong with that but taking their advice on anything outside of the creative stuff is a bonehead decision this is why so damn that's another thing it's like damn so if i listen to 99 percent of these people i'm a bonehead like that's that's a pretty damning statement. So um, yeah, because well, well, let's and let's like we said, we talked about earlier. Like, to be fair, to be fair, uh, <laughs> there are some very successful creatives who, in the in the business sense, are really good at that, and there are others who are not good at managing their money, which is very clear. Yeah, but yeah. There, it, it, you choose choose wisely who you choose to listen to. That's all it comes down to. Mm -hmm. it, you don't have to listen to all. Don't have to disregard all of them. Find the right ones to listen to. It's very, it's pretty clear who is successful and who isn't, and then we yeah. can learn. You can learn. You can actually learn from both sides, honestly. Yep. What to do, what not, what not to. Yeah, what not to do and what to do. I've been. I've worked for so many publishers where it's like they bring you in and they're like, okay, you've been. You know, they're they're new publishers and they're like, you know, you've been in the business. You know these things. You know, um, so that's why we hired you is for your expertise. And then they start making boneheaded decisions that you've seen other publishers make, and you go, uh, hey, this is a boneheaded decision, and they go ahead with it anyway because they're geniuses. Mm -hmm. They were successful at this part. How could they? How could not everything that they do not turn to gold? Right. And then it, you know, it blows up in their face and they lose a bunch of money and you go, yeah, I, if you recall, we, we said that was a bad idea and we gave you the reasons why. And then they're mad at you. <laughs> 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 and all you're trying to do is say like, oh, we, we tried to warn you. And the only reason I'm saying that now is not to give you an, I told you so gotcha, but just to tell you like next time, maybe heed the advice of people who've done it before. Yeah, mm. for sure. Wait, so is Eric July admitting he's not creative by listening to him? <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting the interesting part for me is he's saying like these people are not businessmen, they're not publishers. Well, neither were you. Yeah. Until you became right. a businessman and a publisher. What yeah. if he's my favorite creative comic book person? I can't listen to you now because but you're not a creative. But are you a creative? What what are you? <laughs> I don't understand here. Are you both? Are you not? Yeah. You're I know you're moving differently and I appreciate it, <laughs> but I don't know how you're moving. <laughs> differently. It doesn't it's matter how. It just, it's just you need it yeah. too. I got it. I love that. I love that. So <laughs> no, but Kyle, those Kyle, are... you're you're my favorite again. <laughs> <laughs> we go through phases where we hate Kyle and oh, we love. Kyle. I got <laughs> peaks and valleys. Yeah. <laughs> high Wait, high peaks. You know and why, low, Kyle? It's because, it's because you're moving differently. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You can't you can't follow him. He's moving differently. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, no. And, and that's, that's a really, really good point though. It's like, wait, but you now you could say he was maybe a businessman, but he wasn't a businessman within comics. Like he wasn't publishing his own, uh, his own books or sending out his own books and stuff like that. So is he the end all be all on what to say for, for crowdfunding or, um, for just publishing books in general? Right. So I, I think the the sad thing too about this is that I, I feel like there are going to be a lot of creative creators that watch that video and go, damn, he's right. Like I don't know what I'm doing. So I might I should use the rip ascend or ship averse. And uh that way I can focus on my creative integrity and then I can have him just ship my book. Yep. But then if they're too small, he they're gonna go to rip ascend and they're gonna say, like, hey, I got my book, I'm ready for you guys to ship it out. And he's gonna go, um, we really need you to have a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. Right. And so that worries me. So I feel like these young, these young guys need to use someone like Murphy and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. Cause I've never, I've never shipped a book. Right. So mm -hmm. I could be talking out of my ass. So I have the experts here with me to, to talk more, a little bit more about it. But 
Uh, and so I would use someone like Murphy to go, here's your first crowdfunding campaign. Here's how you do it. Let's walk through it. Let's see if you like it. And if you like it, keep using it, right? And maybe as you get larger, if your book, it's like really, if, if you're pr producing fantastic content, then maybe see if you can um, source it out to rip a send or whatever. Yeah. But for now, I think it's smart to have at least one crowdfunding campaign under your book. Well, your I can account. tell you this. I can tell you this. If Murphy was still at Merck instead of branching out on her own, I'd already have my Miss Meow trade in my hand. Mm -hmm. I'd have a yeah. Death Rage trade in my hand where the page count didn't get misprinted so that the double page spread is now on a page turn instead of a oh, double page spread. Yeah. You know, this is the kind of experience, this is the kind of thing that you do. This is why you need experienced people. This is why you don't tell yourself that, you know, you're the end all be all and you don't need people. And, you know, you don't want to be here. Fine. You know, like you don't like the way, to, the way I run things. Fine. You know, that's, that's what happens with companies and good people leave and then things get messed up. Things fall apart. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, too, I think we need to keep in mind that that I think a lot of what Murphy provides for crowd control and what Eric is offering are essentially two different aspects of, yeah. you know, this business venture. Like mm -hmm. Murphy's going to set you up to help you organize and launch and run a campaign that will hopefully be a successful campaign. Uh, so she's going to come in with that approach that, that's more of a marketing technique and also a sales strategy. What Rip is offering, what Eric's offering is, is supply chain. I mean, point blank. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. And you know, to act like this isn't self-serving for him. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, but he's got a warehouse that he's not using as frequently as he needs to use it to keep the people employed there employed. Uh, yeah, so, Kyle, you know, we talked, we, Josh, we talked, we talked about this today, Kyle, yeah. didn't we, with HM yeah. a lot. Yeah. And yep. Specifically, we gave him a lot of ideas. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. I, we're not going to say yeah. them here because right? I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to give you free advertisement here, but uh, there's, there's, he could be making honestly several thousand dollars right now. There's one way in that warehouse right now, but oh, I'm not yeah. gonna say how. But yeah, but um, I, I think that's what he's looking to do is to utilize that, and he saw an opportunity and he's taking it. And look, and here's one of the things you know where Eric was blessed. He had his very first campaign was an extremely successful campaign. It, yeah. it gave him the funding to be able to kind of venture out in this way. So he did get a leg up. And, and if he takes this, whether it's self-serving or not, but if he takes this and actually helps these other people that do need a little help, I think it's a good thing. But again, yeah. if Ooh, he's yeah. going to take the little guy and be like, eh, you know, look, you're not big enough. Sorry. Uh, I got to run a business over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you even with smaller, even with smaller distribution, you can still step in and assist one way or another. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a great point. I, I like, like I said, I think Ripasen for for a lot of people, and I think even your boy Zach talked about this. But like for a lot of bigger creators, this is going to be a godsend for them because then they really can honestly just work on their creative ma masterpiece, right? They can just be drawing all day and not have to worry about the nuances of like, okay, what shipping company am I using? What paper am I going to print this on? Like what you can just tell Eric, Hey, this is what I want. Do it in this time frame. I can wipe my hands of the whole situation. Right. And that is so freeing to creators. Uh, and I want that to be the, the case. But I remember in that video that he launched Ripasen, he specifically said only those, uh, well, I, I don't want to, because I don't have the actual word, so I don't want you're, to. You're uh, paraphrasing. Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm paraphrasing. Thank you. But he he said we will only accept this people with this type of following, right? Um, so it's so I I hate to say that, but if you are kind of small fry, uh, I I don't know if Ripasend will be the the best thing for you. I think crowdfunding will be a, a great opportunity uh, to see if it is something that you're looking and to also kind of get an uh, an idea of what your market is and see if your product has viability. Like if people it, are want your product. So sorry, go ahead, Josh. So just genuine question. Cause I, I, I honestly haven't looked into Ripasend and all of its details. Is he printing the books for them as well? Uh, guys, do you know? Cause that's I a good question. He I could... was potentially or going okay. to, I so think look, it was an option. If he's printing the books, then I have no problem at all with him saying you need to have a certain amount of copies that we're going to go to print with. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. I'm because because your cost yeah. is going to change drastically based on that. If he's not printing the books, then he's a fucking moron for saying, <laughs> no, I'm not doing it unless you have the certain amount because like your shipping cost. Uh, Survivor mentioned his overhead costs are insane. 
dude, I the cost of everything is a, what's up, Murphy? We're praising there, you over here. Yeah. What up, hey. 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 Uh, by the way, Murphy's uh, Murphy's site is crowd control with a K. Crowd right, control. Yes. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll throw that in the uh yeah. Uh thanks for being here, Murphy. Uh, we love what you're doing and uh Thank you for being here. Yeah, we you your ears must have been burning because uh, we were yeah. talking about you earlier and saying how how great a work you do. So yeah, yeah. she made a holy um, nightmare. She helped make a holy nightmare a success. That's all I gotta say. Yep. Yeah, she's, she's, gonna she's also awesome. Just, she's gonna oh, be awesome. She's gonna be handling. Yeah. She's gonna be handling Neil before Doomface. Uh, I'm not gonna go with anybody. Hey. There's no one else to go with. Hey. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Lasers. <laughs> Jesus. We need some like jerk. <laughs> you <laughs> you Mac assholes. God damn that is crazy. <laughs> you Woo, West, I'm you celebrating over here, here, baby. You and West go. Think you're so special. Lord. Oh god. Uh, oh well. But no, I, what I was gonna say is overhead costs, like man, stuff's expensive. You know, you're paying for employees, and he's been preaching that you know he's gonna pay people well. So, you know, uh, you've got your building that you gotta pay for. And when you've got stuff like comics, especially in some place like Texas, you want that, you know, you want a climate control that's not gonna be cheap here in Texas. Uh, you're, you're shipping stuff out, you want to have a good particle board for the cardboard that you're using, you want to buy the plastics to protect the actual books themselves that you're gonna sh- like. There's all these factors that I think a lot of people don't think about. And I'm speaking from experience. I worked for a national retailer, a, a major one, and I helped oversee our supply chain. This stuff adds up real fast. So yes. If he's paying for printing, I understand. If he's not paying for print, or if he's not doing printing, I don't understand. Because the more you're shipping, the the more uh, viability you have to negotiate your shipping costs. And shipping costs are outrageous. Just like so many things, they are outrageous right now. Um, so yeah. This uh, the and and that's such a great point, Josh. Thank you for for bringing that up. This could, but see if he if he goes on. Uh, if he adds on books from a different campaign, like say there's a thousand books from this small, smaller creator. And uh, it's like, Hey, here's just a thousand books. Add this on to your already making like Yaira, you know, 9,000 copies or whatever of the book. Um, don't they have to negotiate a, a, a different deal then? Because if you're printing one book, it's all the same thing. So you're just rolling through those pages, so but the second I, you give I'm them on. Different- I'm on their site right now. I'm on that Rip and Send site right now. It's all oh. done by consultation. He says they offer a wide variety oh. of services, but it's all done. It's all tailored to their agreements and what the, what the each individual need is for each client. So it's all, I guess, depending on the size and scope of what you have, I guess it's going to vary. But yeah, there's nothing in there as, how much it's going to cost. If there's a generic yeah, that won't be a pain in the ass later, that won't bite him in the ass later. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Max, to answer your question, it depends. Uh, as far as like, yeah. e- typically, if if you're shipping, you know, hundred thousand units of all the same thing, you're typically going to get a better price than if it's different things. But even if it's different things, you're go- still going to get a better price than if you're going about each one individually. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And and I think this is at the end of the day, it all comes down, Michael. I think you put it well here. Uh, look at all of them with care. Look at all your different options. As a creator, you do have to do your research. You do kind of have to put on your business cap when you're first starting out and seeing what do I really want to do? What is my goal here? What am I, you know, what is my bottom line essentially? Um, And it all comes down to that. So I think looking at these with care, but um, even still, I I wanted to do this because I'm sure we've all been here. Uh, Raise your hand if you have a book that hasn't gotten to you within the past three years of ordering. Yo, I think that <laughs> Kyle, I can see him raising uh, his hand. For me, the third thing, baby, still. Uh, um, oh wait, no. now back to four books. I I typically oh, avoid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about five years? Does That's just sad. I, don't I think, I think, I think it's coming. I think it's coming up on it. Honestly, I think it's coming. up Is on it almost it. at five? Okay. I think it's almost at. Five. What the hell? Um, I need details not... in the private chat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Well, one of them I think is godlike, and I think that is almost maybe four years. Uh, oh, I, didn't, I, I, I do didn't, know. I didn't, uh, I didn't back that because I read. Uh, well, never mind. I read some other things. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, as much as much as it pains me to say it, I mean, I, I 
I, I'm still back. In, I, I invested heavily in this book, but Black Flag by Dan Fraga, that's somewhere between yep. oh, that's right. three to five years oh. now. That's like three to five yeah. years now. It's, I, I, I mean, he, it looks he, 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 yeah, that, that's, that's, that's beautiful. The tough thing. It's like, it looks <laughs> so good, though. And it's like, damn it. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Hurry up. Yeah. Uh, so, and that, that's kind of the trade off is like, yeah, these things are going to take time if you really want that quality. So, it, it, do they, though? Like, it, it, but like, okay, so first book out of the gate, sure. Yes. Yeah. But if you've had a couple of campaigns where you've made over $100,000, why is that money not going back into your next book so that your next book is completed before you offer it? Yeah. Yeah. Iconic mm -hmm. can do it. Mm hmm. So it's a great point. And I think that is what Eric was trying to say in one of that, one of those segments there in his video was basically there are a lot of people who get a ton of money, maybe a hundred, hundred K, maybe, you know, uh, six, six digits uh, from that, uh, from that campaign and they initially go, man, I now have a hundred thousand dollars profit. And it's like, whoa, no, 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 no. Right. Like you may get a couple thousand dollars profit on this thing. If that, right. Because of all the overhead costs that you have to pay back. Um, so, or paying, paying for the next book that you have, um, drew, I know with unholy nightmare, you said we reached our goal, but everything after that, we're going to try and put back into unholy nightmare number two. Right. Oh, so stuff absolutely. like that. Yeah, we've we already, yep, already invested in new covers for the book. I've shown some of them to you guys. And uh, a lot of that money that we have right now, new account that's going to go toward finishing the book, as well as shipping, fulfillment, and everything else, and printing. So, yeah. And that, that's my hope for Neil before Doomface. I want to make enough money on that first campaign so that mm -hmm. Renzo can just draw the second book. And when we, when we do the campaign for that one, that it's like, okay, our campaign closed. It's going to the printer, and a month, two months later, you're getting that book in your hands. Mm -hmm. That's the goal, is so that yeah. we can do a turnaround. I don't want to be a crowd funder for long. I want to have that be a pre-order service. Mm, yeah. Mm. I, and I wonder what would make that quicker, um, you know, that that turnaround time quicker, because we, we're seeing guys like Brett Booth who are who are just like, cranking out he's he's cranking out some of the best artwork of his entire career monthly this dude is on yeah. multiple monthly books and is cranking out artwork better than everyone in the industry right yeah and so it's not like, covered not just covers interiors interior, interior pages 22 <laughs> page books right and this dude is crushing it so it's like it can be done right now granted he is in he he's in good standing with a lot of these mainstream publishers but it, as a creator it can be done and we've seen yeah. it before so um that's kind of what we have to compare it to but andrew um, dalhouse once suggested that brett booth and i get together write a uh, a backlash comic for dc and he oh, colored it oh, and i would oh, i, I would i would no dc's never gonna do backlash that's the problem you oh. think brett brett would love to do backlash and taboo in a heartbeat yeah yeah he said it more than he said it more than once dc just doesn't want to do it because you know why because they want to put out fire and ice. Oh God! You're Don't remind product. me of that book. That that <laughs> I agree, Kyle. It's it's a national Thank treasure you. at this point. It is. Oh no! We got. By the way, Max, I, I, I I'm a little late, but I jo I've joined your paint stream while we're while we're talking here. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> I love it. Um, Omni, yeah, you're right, brother. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a night letter now. I'm gonna be getting uh, letters in my DMs now saying I'm on the list. Uh, that's right. Look, I get it. Like, you know, I get it. That, like, if you, you're like, well, why would I complete this book when I can make, you know, $5,000 tonight in Super Chats? Like, I get that. But then maybe do cheap Super Chats and stop doing books. All right. Yeah, yeah there, uh, there's a lot to learn from all of this. But sorry, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, Survive put a comment about Deadly Duo taking a long time. That wasn't, mm -hmm. there's way more going into that that has nothing to do with the creative team. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what's Deadly Duo? Batman, uh, and Batman, Joker. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Sylvester's thing, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because I'm pretty sure when I spoke to Mark in uh, Dallas, when I asked him about it, I was like, "So, so when, when did you come up with this? How did you have this idea?" He's like, "Oh, dude, I've had this idea for a while." Um, so he he had Deadly Duo, like the the concept for it. I think the script. I think he's had it for a while, but it just took the 
the publisher it took DC to get it uh, to get it out. But well, you know, they, it, they don't answer top flight creators half the time. You know, they get pitches in uh, from mm. top flight creators. They've all been complaining about it and saying, like, I just don't hear anything back. It's, and that was I'm it's sort of that, but it's not even it was Ghost Beyond the Pitch. They announced this. I want to say at 2018 San Diego Comic Con. Uh, we were there, we recorded yeah. it. Um mm -hmm. And, I, and, the, and it, it, yeah, yeah, he's at Batman's 75th, 75th anniversary. He is there promoting it. Yeah. And then and then they they went into radio silence after DC themselves announced it to fans and had a date for when mm. it was going to come out. Like uh, that's that's where the problems come in. It's but, so long you know, ago that Josh was still with Batman News. He was just a fresh. Oh my god, that's part right. of the Newsboy <laughs> Legion. You know, and his little Aww. his little propeller beanie going. Oh boy, Mister Sylvester, I sure can't wait for that Deadly Duo book to come out. <laughs> what do you oh, say, no, boys? You, oh, oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be the best th th ever. <laughs> Scoop. And then and then you got a night letter from Scott Snyder and is like, "How dare you give my book a seven? <laughs> It wasn't. I mean, I didn't give his book. It was six and a half, <laughs> and I didn't give it to him. That was Jay Oz. What a degenerate. Oh, Jay Oz is one yeah, of my best friends. What a detractor. Which, oh. uh, which, which book was it? Which, which uh, All Star Batman number one. Oh, that's that's. I would say that's high. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Uh, Zach says, "I'm a dummy." What's a night letter? It's essentially a letter saying, "Fall in line or else." It's like a oh. thrill. It's it's like yeah. It's no? like it, hey, we saw you talking to such and such. It's kind of the bad look for you to do that. We would yeah. it'd be, it'd be terrible if something bad were to happen to you. It'd, it'd be a shame if your if your comic book shop burned down. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw you. We, it, it comes from uh, it comes from like you know when we're um, in an occupied country. in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, like when the uh, or when the yeah Afghani's you know who were helping out the Americans and. Uh, the Taliban would be send them night letters, be like, "Hey, we saw you helping out such and such, talking to such and such. It'd be a bad thing, something bad for to happen to your family if you keep talking to them." Mm. They had yeah. to be written at night, though. That's the only thing. That's well, they can put on your door. <laughs> <laughs> they can yeah. put on your door at night. Well, it's because they're all yeah, from, they're all from vampires, so they can yeah. only be delivered at night. <laughs> um, it doesn't count, Keel. It was during the day. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I got a day letter. Yeah, I guess I can't. I, I guess I, I have to stop referring to. Uh, to Mark Wade's night letter to me as a night letter since it technically came through during the day. Yeah, and it was in the form of a night letter. It was in the form of a Facebook Messenger message. Yeah, come on. Uh, it wasn't sent by Pigeon. So. No, it wasn't. Uh, I was also going to, going to say because uh, we we raised our hands on crowdfunding projects that we have not received in the past two years, and then I think the most recent, and then the next one was like four years. I think we're all kind of eh, it's, it's about to hit four years. But I know a lot of us also, I have not witnessed this, but uh, I, I think some of us have not even received a book at all, like at all at all. Like your money was given and then it just whew, gone. Oh, like uh, let's say to uh, um, Richard Pace or uh, B. Claymore. Oh, yeah. Are those, <laughs> are those examples? We're, we're yeah. coming up on, we're coming up on a yeah. decade, I think, for those guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, is there a point where you can like opt out and get refunded then? No, he that money's gone. Uh, yeah. That money's I gone. Mean, it's like it's like in the Ghostbusters movie when they go to Kumail Nanjani's apartment. And by the way, that movie is terrible. <laughs> they go to his apartment, yeah. and he opens the door, and he because he sold an artifact to uh, to them, and uh, and then they're like, oh, this artifact, you know, it's like there's all this history behind it. Maybe he knows more. And they go to his apartment, and he opens the door, and they tell him that you know we're from Ray Stance's shop, and he goes, that money's gone. That's that's basically B Claymore at this point. Oof. <laughs> yeah, he spent that money a long time ago. He's not making enough money to make it up and actually finish the book and mm. deliver it. And why would he deliver it to you, Rubes? Why would he? <laughs> that he was entitled yeah. to your money. You don't deserve a book for that. Oof. That yeah. And, and I and I do believe that there are creators that believe that a hundred percent. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So thirty-two flavors of Nick Weiser. What is happening, brother? Great to see you here. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, I think I, I do want to disagree with this, though. Um, he says, these combos about crowdfunding versus your own publisher, which crowdfunder is better, is stupid. Uh, enjoy what you enjoy, dislike what you dislike. Uh, I, I do agree with you there. Enjoy what you enjoy, dislike what you dislike. Um, but when it comes to the combos about crowdfunding versus your own publisher, I, I think they are extremely helpful. 
Um, and I think that they can be really beneficial to people who may be entering the space that may not know kind of what to do or may have questions about it. So I, I think that they are beneficial. I don't want to say that they're just stupid um, because it's not, you know, we're not trying to drama farm. We're not trying to cause infighting. That shit is stupid, right? That's, that is high school drama that has no place here. But I do think it's important that if someone is calling out, hey, crowdfunding is, is the way of the past. It's archaic. You need to go with my thing or vice versa. Um, I think it's smart that we do have these conversations that say, hey, well, let's look at all, all of the facts here and, and kind of bring these things to light. Because I, I think that, like I said, it's very beneficial for people who may not know um, otherwise. So uh, do you guys have any any uh, opinions on that or any any uh, anything else to add to the conversation? Do you or, or maybe you disagree with me? Um, no, I think I think uh, I, I mean, I think that you nailed like my perspective on it, at least. OK, um, well, oh, go ahead. No, I just said, yep, yeah, that was a good conversation. That was really good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and I do know that Murphy would love, I, I think Murphy is going to be uh, releasing a new, yeah, she's uh, launching uh, this week a new project. So maybe if you guys are up for it, uh, maybe we can do something next week, uh, maybe on the Friday show. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk with Murphy and Murph, if you're still in the chat, we'd love to have you on. So, uh, we'll, we'll see yeah. if we can promote your, your stuff. Cause we, yeah, we love trying to do that as much as we can here. So it's, it's um, the Friday show live from WonderCon. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Hopefully we can make it to, to WonderCon. Uh, I thank thanks to Aaron. I, I, he was like, yeah, it's, it's this weekend. And I was like, Oh, is it real? Oh my gosh, I should probably get tickets. Uh, but but I, I love going there because it's like right by, uh, it's it's in our neck of the woods. So yeah. yeah, like our hope is to, like my hope is to go to Max's early in the morning on Saturday, do aficionados sitting with him in his, uh, or just standing behind him. I don't know, you might not have a second chair. Uh, <laughs> just, I'll stand behind you like a magistrate. Uh, yeah. But uh, do that and then jet over to WonderCon and uh, and hang out with everybody. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be fun. Uh, well, let's get into some reviews because I think we've hit the crowdfunding topic. We've hit the, uh, you know, kind of the uh, t-shirt topic, if I want to, you know, say that because that just, I, I had to dis I had to talk about that because that was just so unsubstantiated and uncalled for. Um, Guys, uh, and then we also- Let me brainstorm some Doomface shirts. Uh, just, let's see. How can you troll people? No, I don't want to troll people. I don't want to, I don't want to own oh, any okay. chuds. Well, that's the thing. It's like, yeah. My, my customers are not chuds. Right. <laughs> They're the, paying people. Yeah. They're paying people who are who have exquisite taste and, and elegance and yeah. class. Honestly, Aaron, a lot of your Doomface merch, especially if it's going to be clothing, you can just pull quotes and it's going to be freaking fantastic. So. Yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah. I just want to, I would love a, a cool distressed t-shirt with dude face on it like an old school it's got like a distressed like 70s 80s look to it and oh uh, yeah that'd be good yeah i could i could get behind that oh almost like it's like a 70s or 80s like rock album cover and then thrown on a t-shirt yeah, like yeah. A man Absolutely. shirt oh yes. fuck yes. yes okay i'm down Go. i wish i had more locations in the first issue i'd have it like the, in the bit like all the places he's going like you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be rad uh the super, so the super villain gala is gonna be great <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. Yeah, I cannot wait till uh, you we we get to the uh, what what is what is your Justice League called again? Oh, the Social um, Justice League. The Social Justice League. Yes, yeah. the White, the white Knight, the White Knight, and the Social Justice League, with yeah. characters I'm, such as, as Gatekeeper, non-binary, and gender fluid. <laughs> yeah. Um. So speaking of uh, reviews, or because I, I said we're, we're going to get into some reviews. Uh, the recent Ghostbusters film came out. Red Letter, Red Letter Media did a, uh, a review on it. Um, for the most part, I think they pretty much just said it was a fart in the wind, and uh, that, that's about it. It's just another movie, and it's just like it wasn't good, it wasn't bad, it just kind of happened, right? Uh, and that's unfortunate because we're we're getting these movies now that have zero creative integrity. It's just. Hey, what's another Beetlejuice? We haven't done Beetlejuice in decades. Let's do Beetlejuice. Oh, Ghostbusters. Oh my God, we haven't done Ghostbusters. It's just like, to have a to have an individual creative thought. Right? Like, I, I just feel like we're we're missing that now. Uh, and Mike had creative said thoughts are, is Creative thoughts is taking chances, Max. And taking chances <laughs> makes me feel scared. It is scary. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so that's that's fair. But Mike had said something in the review uh, that I wanted to kind of highlight. And I thought I wanted to ask you guys if you think that this is a real like, could this be an actualization? Could this be real? Could we see this within the next few years in Hollywood? But uh, I'll play the clip with uh, Mike. Before we, before uh, I, we play this, did they oh, yeah. did they like speak to why they're all dressed up for various holidays? Like, no, like, I don't yeah, know. I was like, I don't know why Jay's wearing a stand-up. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know, like I, drew, I don't know why Drew. I don't know why Drew. I don't know why Drew is dressed as Santa. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's tiny Drew. Yeah. yeah I just uh, I was just really, it was cold that day. I was like, you know what? It was like a Santa Claus type of day. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Uh, I do resonate with Mike's posture at all times. <laughs> this is just how I feel twenty four seven now. This is just yeah. this is how I. This is I this is the like face. This. Look at that face. That that face is the face of a man who has watched everything he loves, everything he's ever loved as, from his childhood, be burned in front of him while people laugh in his face. Yeah, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, D- uh, Doctor Who, um, Indiana oh, Jones, Ghostbusters, and his Indiana, go- yeah. and now yeah now his favorite I think his favorite movie of all time he said is Ghostbusters. So, uh, but yeah, let, let's see what Mike has to say. Uh, I uh, opening moment in the whole movie for me. I've I've been seeing news stories pop up here and there, both in print media and on television, saying that the younger generation. 25 and under is shifting away from movies yeah and even tv yeah Mo- like 80 percent of people under 20 prefer to watch short form videos on their phone like TikTok, barely watch shows and even fewer take the time to watch a movie yeah and uh when uh, uh race dance and podcasts were making their youtube video <laughs> i was like i had this like moment of like this is all gonna end soon isn't it <laughs> <laughs> like movies <laughs> Because the theater's empty on opening day. Oh yeah, here's here's the, the the view of our theater when we got our tickets. And so my brain was like, celebrities, it's gonna start like they're gonna start coming over. Movies are gonna go away, and celebrities are gonna start invading like TikTok and five second videos. Yep. Quibi was well ahead. Quibi, of time. <laughs> it was too far ahead of the time. Yeah, they they. they Quibi were too will far make ahead. Quibi will rise from the grave like a George Romero zombie and come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So um I just I, I thought that was an interesting anecdote. Mike Mike basically just saying movies are dead. They're not coming back. They are a thing of the past. The, the they the Hollywood lost the next generation. They completely lost it. They they had it when they had uh I, I think the last generation was me because we had Lord of the Rings, we had the prequel trilogy, we had like Gladiator and 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 you know like the early 2000s, right? And then they lost everyone after that. Because then after that, it was just, you know, prequels and sequels and all this stuff. So, uh, but Aaron, you actually saw Ghostbusters. So do you resonate with this? Like when you saw them podcasting and going like and subscribe, uh, what what did you think about the film? And, and how does this make you feel? When I saw that particular scene, I was like, oh, this scene was written so that they had a reason to bring the Asian kid from the small town over too, because he was in the last movie. And so he needed to be here. And then there was another scene where it's like they bring over the character of Lucky from the last film and shoehorn her into an unnatural thing because it's like, okay, it's the Spengler kids. And for some reason, Paul Rudd and the Spengler (laughs) wife and the Spengler kids are all living in the firehouse now. And it's like, I don't understand. They're, They're going out on calls. Paul Rudd and the and the wife are going out on Ghostbuster calls. And I'm like, I get that her dad was Egon. I get that she wanted to reconnect with her dad. I don't see anything in her character. And they so there certainly isn't anything in this film for her to want to be a Ghostbuster. It's all so miserable. Like in the first movie, and even in the second movie, you want to see them go out on calls. You want to see the crazy ghosts because it's funny and they do funny things while they're out there. And none of that happens in this movie. None of it. There's way too many characters because they had to bring everybody that was in the last movie and shove them in. And then we got to have, you know, Fat Oswald, Fat Oswald's stupid head in there <laughs> talking. You know, you got to endure a scene with him. Actually, Camille Nanjani is pretty funny. Like he he he's like the only one that's trying. There's nothing for Finn Wolfhard to do in this movie, by the way. He's just there because he's one of the kids. I guess hmm. his arc, like I think even Mike and Jay say it. His arc is he wants to drive the Ecto-1. And then at the end of the movie, he gets to. Hmm. Yay, character development. Hey. 
uh, there's a, that's there's what a, I call setup and payoff. Yeah. There's a, a lesbian. <laughs> there's a lesbian teenage ghost subplot, like romance subplot between Phoebe and this ghost that burned to death. And actually, I will Finally. say the actress that plays the ghost and her interaction with Phoebe, it's actually cute. It's a cute interplay oh. of like, you know, it, that's that was actually like I was actually interested in their scenes. And it 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 doesn't go like it doesn't go overtly lesbian. Hmm. You know, you could watch it and say it's just two young awkward girls kind of relating to each other. And you know, but you know Hollywood's agenda, so it just every scene you f- you just feel it. You're just like gritting your teeth, going like, "Oh, is Ray yeah. gonna walk in with the PKE meter and being like, I'm picking up stage five, 16 year old, you know, spectral scissoring." You know, it's oh, like no. you just feel the agenda <laughs> coming. Um, and it's like, but but like, I wanted to enjoy that. I wanted to just enjoy like a sweet friendship between two girls, and and they actually pull it off really well. The actresses do a good job. Um, that, but when that's the most interesting thing in a Ghostbusters movie. Yeah, I was bored through the rest of it. Bill Murray shows up for his usual ten minutes. Um, he's got a good line where Ray's like explaining everything that they need to do. We need to, you know, recalibrate the blah 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 blah. You know, do you know what I do? You know what I mean? And 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 Bill Murray just kind of exhausted, exhaustedly goes, "Just pretend that we do, Ray. Like, just do it and pretend <laughs> that we know. You know, like, and that's pretty good. Um, but it's not worth it's not worth the whole movie. And then at the end of the movie, it's like, hey, the kid's called Paul Rudd dad, and it's like this big moment, and I'm like. Oh, was, was I as an audience member supposed to be rooting for that? Because you didn't, yeah, you didn't get me there. You didn't. I don't care. I don't care. Like the wife is like, there's nothing for her to do. There's nothing for Finn Wolfhard to do. You know, the movie is mostly about about Phoebe, but you know, they also focus on some. You know, four out of ten, man. Just just Ooh. not necessary. Not yeah. necessary. The only reason that it got, and the only reason that like maybe I would rate it like a solid five is just because if you love Ghostbusters and you're just like. I want to see Ecto Pack, you know, Ecto Gear, and I want to see the Trap, and I want to see Slimer, you know, and I want to see the Ecto One again, you know, and and oh look, there's an Ecto Three, and it's a motorcycle that kind of references the cartoon and the toy line, you know, like if you're into all that, you know, the jangling of keys, then then you're gonna have an okay time. But if you actually take any time to think about the movie, it's just you're gonna be like, can I can I just, can I just get my ten bucks back? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the big thing uh, is, it's just, it, this is so unnecessary. Why did we need this? No one asked for this, right? No one asked for afterlife and, and no, and no one asked but people were after. generally well disposed towards afterlife because they were like, okay, mm. you gave us an ending. Yeah. The thing I didn't like, and I was like, okay, yeah, you gave us an ending. It was like kind of a nice say, saying goodbye to Harold Ramis, you know, and I, and I get it. Cause we never did get that third ghostbusters, but also it falls into the same thing that we don't want to see in any of these movies. In Star Wars, I didn't want to know that there's been no peace in 40 years since Return of the Jedi. Hmm. And all of my heroes are sad and old and have had miserable lives fighting a continual war. You know, I didn't want and Indiana Jones to be a broken down old man. I didn't want Nick Fury, you know, in Secret Invasion to be <laughs> oh, an incompetent, broken down old man. I don't <laughs> want to know that the Ghostbusters business wasn't successful after Ghostbusters 2 and they all drifted apart. And, you know, and then now I'm supposed to cheer for this new family being Ghostbusters. I don't give a shit. You know, the movie should have been the Ghostbusters franchising out. And then you bring in actors like Paul Rudd, Kumail Nanjani. You know, mm. you bring in those those kind of, you know, Jack Black, wh- whoever, you know, just people that are going to be funny on screen and bounce off of each other well. You know, that, that you bring them in and they're like the new team. And then the old team's like there to kind of like advise. But, you know, they're they're because, you know, Ghostbusters works if they're old and schlubby. It's actually kind of funny. Sure. The older and well, yeah. schlubbier that they are. <laughs> that was kind of the, these are just normal dudes uh, make, starting a business. That's, yeah, they're exterminators. That's, that's the, yeah, that's the Ghostbuster <laughs> film, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate that this was just so pointless and boring. And, and like you said, four out of 10. And I think what I can to hear- <laughs> Annie Potts is in there. They make the big deal. And it was like kind of cool. Cause like the cartoon, you know, you're like Melvin's in uniform and you're like, oh, all right, Janine's getting her due. She could not be less interested in being there. At one point she has to walk up some stairs and you're just like, why are you making her do this? She's so old. Oh, like, she's so old. <laughs> she's still and cute, it, but she's not even like being Janine anymore. She's just kind of yeah. like, she's Annie Potts just there. Yeah. Cause she has, I to think, be. yeah, I think the, the biggest th- criticism that I hear is, uh, too many subplots and way too many characters and Phoebe is annoying. Like th- those are the three ones that I've heard the most, 
But I like what you've said about this and said, you know, hey, this should have been something different, which is handing this off to a lot of other uh, individuals. But um, on, on the on the topic of, um, you know, kind of moving over from Ghostbusters and, and talking about what movies mean now, do you guys legitimately think that that celebrities are going to start hopping onto YouTube and TikTok and, and stuff like that and being like, we're now going to take over like this is our Hollywood now or like uh, what was it the Carol Danvers um uh when oh, Brie Larson's uh Brie Larson started doing a YouTube channel she's like I'm doing yoga stretches and everyone's like what well, oh, I, was, I, was, I was gonna say you're already seeing it look at how many celebrities are moving to do podcasts now you know yeah. and, and they're having some of the most successful podcasts um, and, and uh, as sad as it is, I think they're right. I think we're moving away. I see this with the, you know, not my current staff, my old staff. Uh, a lot of them don't watch TV. They don't watch movies and they just doom sc scroll through TikTok or YouTube. And it's yeah. not even long form YouTube videos half the time. It's shorts. Like that's, yeah. you know, and, and what's weird is like for me, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way. If I, if, in a doom scroll session, and I go through stuff, and then I'm like, holy shit, I just did this for more than an hour. I mm -hmm. feel like I have accomplished nothing. I feel like if I've I, wasted my I, life. Yeah. Yes. If I, yeah, watch I, a, if I watch a two-hour movie, I walk away feeling like I accomplished something. <laughs> it's just weird. I don't know. It, one thing I would do on YouTube, I would just – I would normally, before they nuke their channel – I would just have cartoonist kayfabe on. I would have their Wizard Magazine reviews on in the background. I would just listen to them talk about Ooh. the old Wizard Magazine. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Really, yeah. That uh, yeah. that aged poorly. Yeah. Uh, wait, sorry. Talk about, those, talk, about those cute, talk about those cute anime school girls. What are you talking yeah. about? It's all no. uh oh. My internet cut out. It sounded like Drew said. Drew said, "Hi there, little girl." <laughs> that's what i heard i, I yeah okay. I don't know. hey little girl is your daddy home and leave, leave you <laughs> oh, nobody, in the booth, nobody in the nobody in the booth when he when springsteen was singing that was like wait what what'd you say hey, hey bruce <laughs> yeah what's this what's this song what's this song about wait wait it gets better i got a bad <laughs> desire <laughs> uh bruce maybe, maybe maybe uh you know yeah you can't tell bruce what to do um <laughs> so yeah, no, I but I, I I agree. I think uh when I watch a film that's like two, maybe three hours long, I really feel like I have absorbed a piece of art. And I know that sounds pretentious and fucking bleh, but like really I, I like I've you've watched something that takes so many hours to create and thousands of people to to hop on a project like that there's a reason why credits the credits last for like 20 minutes now it's because of how many people are involved in a project like this huh. and uh and it just shows someone's passion like their their creative works on display and you get to see the film and you're like man that was i i got to watch a little bit of art here whether it's denis villeneuve or uh you know what's his name uh freddie got fingered you know what I mean? Or, or, or Paul <laughs> oh, Feig's yeah. Ghostbusters 2016. Um, 100%. Next, turned, next right? turned to me in the theater and said, we just witnessed some art. <laughs> yeah. Or when we watched oh, Madame no, Web no, and we, I walked we out having a headache. We just yeah. witnessed a wet fart. That's what <laughs> yes, <we said>. yeah. <laughs> many, and, actually, um, literally many, many farts in that film. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, the front out of the front, too. Isn't that funny, <laughs> Drew? Yeah. They came out of the front and said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. That that's the most like, cartoonishly one. evil laugh that I've ever heard, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> that's his uh that's his like I'm a I'm an idiot dork and I'm so I'm laughing at this stupid thing. It's like yeah. funsy onesie ice creams. <laughs> oh my soup only has this one is... wonton. Oh. oh yeah. Oh my bunions are killing me. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, yeah, we get it. I just, just my X Men stories off of D and D. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's it's a lot of that. It's a yeah. lot of that. Um, but uh, I was gonna say I I I might actually put stock in Quibi. I don't know. I don't know. YouTube Shorts. That's what everyone's watching. Uh, I mean, even with my Warhammer channel, I have just a few shorts on there, and I've already gotten subscribers from those shorts. Uh, you look at uh, all the TikTok videos. People are now producing like film level quality TikTok shorts. Like they're filming it with like beautiful cameras and lighting and they have scripts and stuff for TikTok videos. Some of them don't and they're just stupid, whatever, you know, it's like, 
13 year olds dancing to a stupid thing and it gets like 400 million views. Uh, but that's, that's where people are going to now. Like I, I legitimately think that Mike has something like, I think he's prophetic here in saying that people are going to stop watching movies and they're going to go over to YouTube and TikTok and whatever. Uh, and yeah, everyone's going to have a podcast. So it's going to be like, are you listening to this podcast? It's like oh, out of the millions that there are. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be weird, but uh, people, that, people can't even dumb. like read past a headline anymore. You know, like nobody has an attention span anymore. They can't read no. past a headline. They're certainly not, not going to watch a movie. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. I could have watched like 16 TikToks in the time it took the opening credits of this movie to, to go. You know, <laughs> that's like, that's so much better. You know, like there's actually, I saw a video the other day and it's just, I was fascinated by it. It's just this girl and there's a song playing and she's making weird faces and kind of like dancing with the camera really close up to her, like making chomping noises, like throughout mm -hmm. the song and like doing like weird eyes and stuff like that. And it was like 200,000, you know, likes. And yeah. then like the first comment is some dad going, uh, you know, I watch this with my daughters. They love your, they love your content. And so I clicked through, I'm like, well, she's gotta have something else. Right. Like, and I clicked through and no, that's, that's literally all it is. All she does. Yep. Just different stuff. And it's like, yep. it's cute for like, 15 seconds you're like oh this is weird this is kind of funny she's making cute expressions like you know i got a chuckle out of, out of that but like a whole channel <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like okay this is made for kids but it's or is it made for retarded adults <laughs> i don't i don't know it's made for uh, a screaming abattoir of, of retarded misshapen troglodytes <laughs> oh shrieking, wow that, that was beautiful <laughs> And spreading want, their filth on the walls. Yeah, that should be Eric's new. Uh, instead of detractors, it should be misshapen. What was it? Misshapen <laughs> something troglodytes. <laughs> misshapen troglodytes. An avatar full of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Josh, you're about to say something. I was just gonna say. I figured this is the the best time uh, opposed to ever. Uh, in an attempt to grow my channel to grow pop by culture, I'm I'm now gonna be an ooh woo girl. Ooh woo. Ooh. Here we go. <laughs> Well, you already have oh yeah on your. Uh, <laughs> Did you grab that from somewhere? Or are you doing that? Oh no, I grabbed no, you, it from somewhere. Yeah, you have to oh, grab okay. it from uh, the video. But Can I uh, get it? Oh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I Josh, I you like could do that. that makes, I don't like the way that makes me feel, Josh. Every time you play it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll have to change it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Josh, you could just do the Ahiego eyes or whatever you call it, Asego, Awego, where yeah. they cross each other, and then you go, ah, and you're like, oh. Oh, yeah. or you do the Glizzy, the Glizzy King guy, where he's like, Glizzy, thank you, oh, hot dog, yum. You could do that and make money off of that. I mean, sounds the sounds fuck like is this shit. Up. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you, Kyle. I don't know. I don't know anything Max just said. I don't even know what language that is. Are we talking Kyle's, about comic books? What the fuck I are we even this. doing? <laughs> okay, we're talking about pop culture, and that's okay. what makes it scary. We will send you videos in the group chat. How about that? Oh, Kyle, you're not you welcome to send you videos. I, I don't know what they're talking about, but I can guarantee you don't <laughs> want these. Yeah, this is the future of film, Kyle. This is the future of movies. Is oh, Glizzy it really, King. It forefront. really is the idiocracy future, right? We, we yeah. really are on the brink of the number one movie in America being called Ass. And for two hours, <laughs> that's all it is. It's just an hey, ass on the screen. Don't come in, I'm baiting. <laughs> when he's on the, he's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what they say in the movie. Ali just sent me that, sent me that in the text the other night. Because yeah. we start talking I'm about baiting. idiocracy. I'm baiting. Jeez, I'm baiting. about that. Uh, well, I'm left. baiting to this five dollar super chat from Dylan Lindsay. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, man. He says, hello, everyone. I didn't think movies or TV are going anywhere anytime soon, but the bloated budgets will. They need to actually be able to make money. Uh, I, I think I, I agree with both. Uh, or Well, I, I disagree and I agree. I think they will lower their budgets, but I think that that will then get actors angry because they won't get pay, paid as much. And so they're going to do YouTube and podcasts on the side to make more money. Listen, good, good. Good. I want actors to make less money. Then you know it's like most of them are like, should 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 Mark Ruffalo be making more than like three hundred dollars when he does a movie? No, <laughs> absolutely not. It's ridiculous. You know that guy should be washing yeah. your car, like you know, yeah. I, I, or at I least just not giving his political. That's take. it. Go I away. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I, I think we need to like level set what we mean by you know movies and stuff are going to go away. People are always going to make movies. People are always going to make like some type of TV show. W- what you're going to see change is movie theaters are going to go away. Yeah. Uh, you know your your uh, I, I guess access to to things that are going to showcase movies is going to get limited. And and what, the only thing I can think of as a comparison, if you go back to 2000, if you said, hey, within 20 years, physical media is going to practically be obsolete, I I don't think anyone would have believed you. Mm, but that's yeah. where we are. You know, if you want to go buy a physical CD, you can't go buy that anywhere. If you right. want to go buy a dvd or blu-ray half the time you have to order it now all these retailers are backing out of it uh brick and mortar stores don't carry these things they're going to go away the, the film industry as we know it television as we know it is going to change drastically to where it's something that we're not used to we're not going to recognize it um and and i know we're saying it as if it's happening soon realistically 25 to 50 years that time span you're gonna see it go away and change oh josh we're not gonna we're not gonna be our civilization's not gonna exist in 25 to 50 well, years you your mind. <laughs> enjoy enjoy the ride folks we're just we're all going down i think uh we're, we're seeing this now with video game companies where they're like you will own nothing and you will be happy uh because with all the video games when they release like box sets like i think it was god of war they released this like anniversary box set of god of war it didn't come with the cd of the game because it came with like the download code on Steam or whatever. It's <laughs> but it didn't come with the game. It came with like the book of like the art. And it came with like the, you know, this and that. And like all these like cool like Kratos things. But it didn't come with the game. Did so, they try to um, sell a WandaVision box set with no discs? Th- th- there you go. You there just got to go watch it on Disney. Yeah. You got to go watch it on Disney Plus. Here's a, here's a yeah. three-month subscription to Disney Plus. Yeah, genius. I've got over 3,000 <laughs> physical DVDs, and I'm not losing them anytime soon. Those are my prized, treasured possessions right now. Those are going to be gold Back here. Physical next media. Years. Drew yeah. will be the richest yeah. man in the apocalypse because he holds all of yes. the entertainment. Uh, I'll be my, uh, one of my one of my friends. Drew is Marine the keeper. Corps. Drew, we must go see Dolan, the keeper of stories. <laughs> yes, yeah. He's in this big library, a big old beard. Um, <laughs> One of my friends in the Marine Corps would always say uh, when the apocalypse happens, he's going to have all this bartering power because he has so much porn. And he's like, people are going to want their porn and I'm going to be the guy to get it to him, you know? I was like, I mean, oh, he's, he's a man with a plan. I got to give him that. <laughs> I was about to say, like, listen, dude, I mean, you, hey, you know what? He was determined. He was like, no, it's it's seriously happening. And I would I would always laugh and I'd be like, that's a really funny joke. And he's like, I'm not I'm not joking. I'm <laughs> and, you, and then you would just back away slowly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, I don't, I don't want to shake just, your hand. We're not going to give you five. We're okay. <laughs> right. Speaking of uh, Disney Plus, though, and you will own nothing. Uh, Disney Plus just released a, a show, and we'll we'll kind of end our uh, our evening here. On X Men '97, I gotta say, you lose points for that transition. Why? Speaking of Disney, you you went with speaking of Disney Plus instead of speaking of actors and producers finding other methods of income like OnlyFans. (laughs) Oh, I mean, we're talking about the show, right? We're not talking about Bo uh, and his. Okay, wait, wait. Take, take two, take two. All right, and action. Speaking of, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. Uh, and no, okay, I okay wait. I have, I have a third. I have a third option. Oh. Boy, yeah, Hollywood really has pulled a boner, haven't they? And speaking of pulling boners, <laughs> <laughs> X Men '97. <laughs> boy, yo, 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 yo. hold the mayo. Yeah. Uh, so initially, so I will say I have not seen this. I have not watched the first two episodes. Uh, so I cannot critique it. However, my beautiful panel of gentlemen have actually watched it. At least I think most of you guys have at this point. Um, and to shocking surprise, uh, I think a lot of you guys actually enjoyed uh, a lot of different aspects about the show um, to even to the extent where like I- I've heard things as far as like it sucks to all the way to, hey, it's actually not a bad start. And I, I enjoyed quite a few aspects of it. Uh, so, I mean, you got to give it to them. It is only the first two episodes and we know Disney plus does this a lot where they release the the best of the best that they got. And then the whole thing kind of, you know, after that, but, um, 
So yeah, uh, Keel, I feel bad. We haven't gotten to hear from you. Uh, you watched this, and I think you probably have the harshest take. But uh, what do you think of X Men '97? Is it worth it? Did we need this? Yeah, no, it's worth it. Actually, oh. I was pleasantly surprised how much wow. fun I had with this. I was ready to roast the shit out of this, and I, <laughs> I couldn't wait. I'm like, oh, here we go, here yeah. we go, boys. I'm starting the fire. I'm getting the pitch. Let's go. Yeah, and uh, get the marshmallows out. But no, I actually was pleasantly surprised. Now it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I think right. the animation is bad in some spots. I think Jean Grey being overly re- like stupidly pregnant for like anyone to see how pregnant she is. And it's like, okay, we get it. You're pregnant. But like <laughs> some of it didn't work. The voice acting felt kind of off. Yeah. Rogue okay. sounded terrible. Greed. Oh, yeah. Like wow. really bad. Like well, it was so bad. Scene. I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> Rogue sounded like, like that. Rogue sounds like an old lady. Like you Yeah, she sounds like that like 55-year-old waitress at the little coffee shop that smokes like three or four packs a day. Yes. That's oh, what she reminded me really? of. Really? Yeah. Barb. Her She's name is Barb. Me, I, Barb. Yeah, I, and it's, Barb, for me the most disap- <laughs> I was going to say Barb doesn't care about how your day's going. She just wants you to fucking order so she can go <laughs> back and smoke a cigarette. Okay, there we go. Sorry, Those Jesus. shoes are uncomfortable, all right? She's been on her feet all day. Yeah. Just tell her you want the goddamn pancakes and then shut up. Yeah. That's our rogue, everybody. <laughs> That's rogue. She's like that old waitress in the hell or high water. Well, don't you want green beans or don't you want the baked potato? All right. <laughs> She's like the old lady that I got a hold of when I was calling trying to get a hold of my friend's boyfriend at Comic-Con when she got roofied. And some old oh. lady picked up and was like, hello. And I was like, oh, I, I'm sorry. I think I have the wrong number. And she goes, would you care to make it the right number? And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's quite the story. Oh, my yeah. God. Did, have I never told you that story? Oh. No, no, never. No. Um, More intriguing than X-Men 97. Please continue. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so I now, is it her acting ability? Because I know some voice actors have a have a good voice, well, but they the just can't one. act in a remote. But. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same voice actress. She's just now thirty years older, and I guess they're trying to respect the role and the character. But like, it, it, she's okay, but she doesn't have that same that, that same energy, that same youthful energy that Rogue has. Clearly, you can tell. It's like, yeah. oh my god. You're rogue. You're old. <laughs> yeah, Does they were like sugar? you can. They were like you can stay because you don't. You don't violate the uh, the demographics of the the current PC uh, casting oh, culture right. in any yeah. particular way. Well, it's like when everyone was freaking out when they announced that. I think the actor's name is Chris Potter, but Chris Potter wasn't voicing Gambit, and he used to voice Gambit, but he's voicing somebody else. And we're like, oh, you got cool. him. Why would yeah, you use him? Like, Dude, he's like sixty something. Why? <laughs> why would you? You're gonna hear it. And I made the oh, I made the comparison. Yeah. Of Harrison Ford voicing the young uh, Indiana Jones mm. in this last movie, like you could tell, it was like this old fart saying these lines. That's a really good point. Yeah, <laughs> I hear when Wolverine he started, when, he started, like, when Indiana Jones starts asking where his Yankee bean soup is, and you're like, oh, <laughs> that's right, he's an old man. <laughs> he's like, I just want to show the, all my Yankee bean soup. Where's Callista? <laughs> The voice actor for Wolverine is interesting because it's almost like yeah. he slips into an accent at times. Is it an Australian accent? I was about to no, say. It's just oh, weird. I, I, it's I, a weird one, I, and it's not you. good. I, I, you know what? I think it's either like Icelandic or Slavic. Uh, they're the same oh, thing, though, right? Yeah, India yeah those are about the same. That, yeah. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. I forgot about the Indian. Well, did, they, did they have a, a voice actress, like an acting coach, a voice coach on set with them while they were doing the Icelandic Slavic accent? Yeah, she's um, a real maybe. chop. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, I'd have to okay. Check the credits. Uh, for for mm. me, I would say the most disappointing voice was Magneto because uh, cool. if you really listen to like for example the first season final solution the last episode you listen to that fire and that passion and energy like that in that in like that kind of like the ethnic tone that Magneto had in that episode it is powerful and the Magneto here he's good but he doesn't have that that power it's less ethnic it's lighter it's more bland. Uh, he doesn't it, it, the, the, because Magneto in the original series he really accentuated his A's and his R's, and I miss that here. It's just, yeah, it's good. It's just it doesn't have that that uniqueness that the original Magneto had. But I'll say the best one is Storm. Storm had the best voice. She was great whole... overall. I liked Storm. Hmm. Hands now, down. 
don't know why they she... wouldn't go all the way though. They give her the they give her the mohawk, but they don't give her the punk outfit. Yeah, uh, well, I, I have a not I have yet. A we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, story wise, because uh, between Drew and, and Kyle, out of these first two episodes, what do you think of the story? I like episode two more than one. I'll say, granted, Agreed. episode two has some, some very yes. heavy handed moments. There's like a lot of heavy handedness in episode two with some of the with some of the dialogue from the Executioner. But still, just beyond yeah. that, the stuff with Storm and Magneto is so fucking good. I love it. Wow. And uh, and the cliffhanger episode two, it's like, oh, we're going here. I love it. And it's just, it really has that great 80s X Men feel to it, but with mm-hmm. Morph. Even though yep. he's not really a major factor in this at all. But uh, yeah, I, I dug it. I really loved episode two. Yeah, episode two is good. Yeah, uh, I would say episode one felt very safe, bland even. Uh, yeah. Episode two, that's when you really saw the plot threads come in. And you can see the the character arcs that they're going to carry out through this first season. I don't, I don't know how many episodes this first season is supposed to be, but um, I I, eight. just... Yeah, I, that's what I thought. And if this is what we're getting for eight episodes, hey, I'm I'm down. And if you can keep it up, I'm I'm on board. And you mentioned Morph not really having a, a role to play, but man, he's also like the scene stealer in a lot of ways. There's there is no plot going on there, but hmm. I, I uh, he's that no. X factor coming in because you don't know who he's going to appear as. I'll, I'll I'll say that I guess. I was going to say, Josh, you and I kind of spoke about this a little bit too after aficionados on Saturday, but like, I cannot tell you how brilliant I think it is that they are going with the release by weekly model, that they're not binging this thing because all of your nerd channels are going to be doing here are the 10 Easter eggs from episode two of X-Men, the animated series 97 or whatever, or like, here's my review of X-Men 97. Like they are going to milk this every single week which is going to get people super hyped for this um so even though there may be some things here or there that are like ah, morph doesn't really have a like a story to tell or you know maybe the voice acting is a little off or maybe things are a little bit heavy-handed um i still think overall this weekly model release model is going to be huge for hype so yeah, um, but that's that's what good television needs to be, you know. Yeah. Um. And, and uh, as much as we talk shit about things like WandaVision, WandaVision's the last time that I can remember people, at least with a Marvel property, you know, speak like when WandaVision was airing, everyone was talking about it after it aired. Each episode was aired, it, you know, they had their theories or whatever was going on, and, and this is a little different because people are kind of again going to the Easter eggs or you know what this could be setting up narratively, like. And or Aaron just said, like, oh, it's a shame they didn't give her the, you know, storm the full punk outfit. And Drew and I are both like, whoa, I mean, let's wait and see, though. So, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I mean, it's I, mean, so, it, 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 sorry, I, I just love the 80s X Men era. And uh, I, mm-hmm. I had, I was pulling out my essential X Men, you know, to those issues where Forge builds the weapon to take out Storm's powers. And it has me wondering if Forge is even a factor in this because he's the one that built the gun in the original comics. I wonder if this was just constructed by randomly by the friends of humanity and we're not going to get like a uh, forge tie-in but mm, i don't know i've seen the character design for forge i think he's going to be in it hmm i don't know when or it's so. going to be more <laughs> or it could be more <laughs> anybody more. could be more i mean look within like a, a 45 to 60 second span we saw morph as morph lady deathstrike colossus and psylocke like that was and, pretty fucking awesome yeah that's pretty damn cool um, Someone and asked, even like, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, and even briefly, like even the brief moment, what was it? Oh, the uh, the 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 clip that I did see of Cyclops fighting Executioner, that action, I gotta say, looked really dope. And that was just a, a clip of it, right? So I, I didn't, of course, I didn't watch the the whole thing. Like I said, I want to be uh, genuine and and you know tell you guys what what's what. But uh, the the brief moment that I did see, you know, I thought it was pretty rad. Uh, sorry, I was while you guys were talking. I'm, I'm sorry, I was reading this. Uh, we'll, we'll have to go back to this real quick before we end the stream. Oh, oh, there's a uh oh, oh, yeah. So maybe it was a whoopsie daisy. I don't know. So, <clears throat> yeah, accidentally, <laughs> accidentally deleted my yep. entire channel. Whoops, whoops, guys. Yep. Yeah, yep, there they are. Yep, they're back. Um, so yeah, but were uh, they just taken down to edit out content like? Wait, anything we need to go through yeah. these. I mean, it's like a thousand videos he'd have to go through. 
Unless you well, maybe. Yeah. And they they edit their comment section, so they turn comments off, and then they one by one like allow them to be put onto the. They go through them and actually publish them. So they they do things differently Weak. on the channel. Weak. They move differently. <laughs> they move differently. Yeah. They're moving differently. Uh, and I was gonna say, um, yeah. So we'll we'll check that out. Uh, I, you know, I think one of the things that I just I can't stand though is why the hell is Gambit wearing a little, you know, tiny shirt? Oh, wait. It's wait the 90s, man. It's the 90s. It's the yeah. 90s, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So Aaron put he, this on Twitter. He looks great at it. He looks great <laughs> yeah. at it. I think and I did end the debate, too. I think I was just like... Yeah. If it's good enough for Carl Weathers, it's it's good enough for, for our boy yeah, Gambit. Girl. And he's got the That's silkies, right. I mean, dude. Yeah, he's wearing the silkies. He's got silkies. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I need to wear for my, for my next birthday stream. I mean, come on. Like, I, 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 I did not like the Magneto costume. I did not uh, like it. it no, looks, Kyle, it, Kyle, it, that's it. It looks great. In the, it looks great in the comics. I know, I know, it's in the comics. I get it. It looks <laughs> fucking stupid in an animated form. I'm well, sorry. Listen, that they needed take, to put the big, the big, I can't do it. They needed to put the big M on him so that Joe Russo could embarrass himself by saying it's MAGA. <laughs> oh of course yeah but uh, once again it's like you're not it doesn't make sense because are you saying that he's being tried for his crimes but now he's want, yeah, he wants it, to do good so are you saying that it's like Trump far, is it, yeah i'll even that's a very very far reach you listen to magneto talk not once did i really get anything out of maga from that it's like yeah, no yeah. i this is it good didn't. no it's not there you're yeah you're yeah chase yeah, chasing that windmills <laughs> Apparently, I accidentally Dude. tweeted a picture of uh, of Mike, and <laughs> not Carl Winter. So yeah, Mike, what are you doing on Aaron's Twitter? What the hell? <laughs> Mike, don't show us your DMs between Aaron, and then we'll have to take oh, our channel. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, 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 my, uh... I'm grooming. I'm grooming Mike and his bad knees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, yeah I honestly some of my favorite bodybuilders uh, from the '90s some of the, the the best guys that you know have won Olympia championships uh, they used to wear the crop tops man that was the thing so uh, and I agree with this Andre uh, the X Men animated was actually really rad and I think the same guy voiced Wolverine for that one too I'm not sure um, maybe Steve they had Huff? a different potentially. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that was, a, that was a X-Men anime was actually pretty So, bad. so Max, the big thing is that there's a lot of questions I had watching this, like a lot of things like, cause watch it. It's like, cause, <laughs> I don't want to get into all the questions, but one of which is how the fuck is Bishop back in the pre present time? Why is he here? How did he get here? And is Xavier really dead? I, as far as I knew, he was with the Shi'ar being healed, but mm. is that just a public thing? thing saying that he's dead or did he actually die in the last because clearly it's not directly right after that last episode it is clearly at least nine months eight to nine months since uh what happened and right, right. a lot but i wonder if we're gonna get and there's a big subplot involving rogue and a certain other character uh -huh. i don't want to yep. spoil and it's like when the fuck did this happen that's what that, i need <laughs> to explain that when the hell did this happen <laughs> in the savage land because they're, they're both old enough to have been from the holocaust to live through yeah. the holocaust. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, before uh, before we finish our conversation here, I believe I can hear a crying baby. So uh, that is Kyle. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Kyle has a crying baby. Uh, so <laughs> no, no, he's not baby. He's not the crying baby. No, no, no. I'm uh, the crying baby. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> no, you're crying about crying. how good X-Men 97 I, is. I had, a, I had a joke that I'm, I'm probably, it's probably best I keep to myself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, please gonna, share I'll put, it in the private, put it in the private chat. <laughs> All right. Please, please. Uh, but yeah, no, dude, thank you for, for hanging out with us for two and a half hours. You totally didn't have to do that, but we appreciate you. You are our, you are our guest tonight. Um, but we uh, yeah. thanks for being here, man, and supporting. Uh, it was great to see you. And uh, sorry we had to we we had to miss you on Friday, but we'll see you this week. Absolutely. I'll be there Friday. I appreciate Sweet. it. Thank you for letting me crash the show. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, man. Looking forward to looking forward to Friday. Wait, there we go. Yeah, woo. Later, Kyle. <laughs> Aaron, I love you. Thanks. See you guys. Appreciate it. Later, brother. Later. Bye. Bye. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I just got. Uh, I just got the <laughs> private chat. Oh boy. Woo, spicy. Uh, spicy. Yeah. I'm a spicy meatball. Uh, spicy meatball. Um, so. 
yeah, what Josh, gonna, what were you going to say? I was just gonna say, what I was going to say earlier is someone asked how a Cyclops and then Crane Kicks, but they nailed Cyclops in the show. And I'm going to agree. I really like Cyclops in these first two episodes. Like, he feels yeah, like a leader. Was... And he anchors the show for me so far. So, yeah, Hell given yeah. a lot of respect, much more respect than I thought they were going to give him. And oh, it, it yeah. was quite shocking, honestly. And he, and he should be. He is their anchor to both. Yeah, teams, he's you know, the leader. To, to he's the, the guy. The OG team, yeah, and to the new team. So yep. I, I love that, man. That's that's good to hear. And, you know, Max, you mentioned the action. And, and even though I think the animation itself could be better, they do mm-hmm. a lot of really creative things with the action that I think is unique, but not trying too hard. Like, when you see it, it kind of makes sense. And you're like, it. there were things that I witnessed in these first two episodes that I was like, I wonder why people haven't thought of this before. If yes, maybe yeah. I'm, maybe I'm all alone in that, but no, 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 that, that makes sense. Um, and, and I guess it is now that they, cause my whole question was always like, why did we need X-Men 97, right? Like what are they doing to add to, or like to, to finish off a story or to create new stories or to, you know, what, why do we need it now? Um, and if you're saying they're utilizing this to show off new inventive ways of like how to do action with this animation style, I'm here for it, man. That sounds really rad. So, um, I will, I will probably wait till the entire series is out um and see if it's worth my time uh because i think i was telling you guys the other morning it it is max max you're gonna enjoy it i guarantee you you watch by the time you get that second episode by the end of that second episode you're like holy shit yeah i gotta watch what's coming up next because i really i because i i love i'm sorry i gotta say this again i love so much (laughs) what they did with storm the second episode storm is amazing in it and yeah if they really go down the path i hope they they're gonna go down it's from like the comics i am all on board for it i cannot wait yeah. So I, uh, you know, I have the 92, 93 series and I love that a lot. And it's, you know, even though people might say like, oh, this is so much better. I, I, I just, like I said, I don't really need this. Like it's great. And I'm super happy that people are loving it. And I'm even more thankful that it's good. You know, that people are like, Hey, this is actually really good. I just, I don't know. It's like, I don't, I don't need a continuation of the story the the series ended and, and I'm cool with that. And I don't need anything more. I, um, I'm going to say so. is that that last episode, that last season, the art was so fucking bad. The animation was so bad. Yeah. That, uh, <laughs> this, this, this gladly makes up for that last season and yeah. it, it needed it. And I'll, I'll, nice. I'll, I'll watch this. I'll gladly rewatch this more than any episode from the last season. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, anything else that we want to say about, X-Men 97. Because, yeah, like, like I said, uh, I, I probably won't watch this until it's out fully. Um, this is this is kind of interesting, too. Mike said that both of these were written by Bo. Oh. So what 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 really got him fired? I think we still have yet to find out. So, And, and we talked yeah. about what those possibilities were. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, I'm glad that this is awesome, man. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about it because I hope that uh, I hope that it continues. Like, because honestly, the best thing for this would to have more hype and to get even bigger as it continues to go. Because that's what we're seeing in the theaters, right? It's like you have something that comes out, like Guardians of the Galaxy three, I think, came out and it had kind of a small opening. But then that second weekend, it either it either kept its pace or gained like more people. So that's what I think I'm seeing a lot with TV shows and movies now is that people are so much more hesitant to get in there. But then once they see it, word of mouth, and then it's like, hey, this is really good. So, but, uh, but yeah, did anyone look and see if um, the cartoonist kayfabe guys had put up their stuff again? Yeah, the video, their channel is back up. The, all the videos are back up. Hmm. Have we seen yeah. whether or not there's been like a statement issued? Like I categorically deny these. Uh... Would you just we cut and say paste. you could cut and paste Vince McMahon's comments? No, would nothing, we say I'm, that I'm maybe like huh. nothing in the com- nothing in the community tab? Yeah, I, I was gonna say would would maybe something have happened where Ed maybe drunkenly or like in a fit of rage had taken it down? Just like unassumingly and and irresponsibly was just like ah screw it i'm just gonna get rid of everything i'm gonna go scorched earth maybe i don't know 
I don't know. But it's here. So it is up and running now. So, oh, well. Uh, we will get, as we get more information, we'll share with you guys, hopefully either on the Friday show or, uh, next week's, uh, Max's man cave. Uh, hopefully by that time we either have more information or it's like completely gone and we don't have to worry about it because some of that stuff can get kind of dark. But, um, other than that, I want to share one last time, our boys, uh, crowd funder. Uh, on Kickstarter for Pray for the Sinner issue number six. And you can get all six here on this campaign as well. So go check this out from uh, Dolan. Uh, you were writing on this project with some beautiful artwork by uh, some really talented artists. And uh, yeah, go back. At yeah, we just crossed with, 17K uh, during the live stream. Dietrich Smith on the interior art. Ooh. And uh, yeah, he's doing a great job. Uh, beautiful, beautiful cover artists. Uh, don't want to miss out. This is the final. This is the final chapter uh, to pray for the sinner. Until maybe in the future, near future, very, very near future, maybe something with sin will be coming out. We'll see. Nice. Well, uh, yeah, you got you got plenty of projects that you were working on, my man. So it's glad to see uh, so much of what you're doing getting published now. So. Yeah, finally. It's like, finally. They're all starting to come out now. Yeah. Like, really. You can finally you can... start talking about them. Yep. Yes. Yeah. You have me nuts. <laughs> NDA. NDA. <laughs> I know, finally. Uh, well, you guys got anything else before we uh, say good evening and goodbye? Sayonara for the, for the night. Just that uh, just, uh, I, I love you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> Uh well thank you. I have such a I have oh. such a blast doing this. I don't I don't care if anybody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> well thankfully we actually had a great turnout tonight. So um nice. yeah thank you all in the chat. Thank you for all the lurkers that came out tonight. Uh thank you to uh, everyone who comments and and hangs out with us. We appreciate the views and uh like I said all the super chats, all the memberships, all the views, all that all that monetization goes right back into the show. Uh, or it pays for Josh's two piece and a biscuit to get him on right. uh, every Sunday. So uh, <laughs> we uh, we appreciate him getting on here. But yeah, so uh, we will call it a night. Thank you guys for um, hanging with us. Uh, that was there was a ton of topics that we kind of tried to roll through as quickly as possible. But uh, let us know if there's anything else you'd like us to cover, and uh, or if you have any thoughts about the kind of crowdfunding or the movies or any of the topics that we discussed. We'd love to hear y'all's thoughts. But other, other than that. Uh, enjoy your Palm Sunday. And if we don't see you guys next Sunday for Easter Sunday, uh, maybe we can do something on Saturday. Uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, if, I, if we don't see you, have a beautiful uh, Easter Sunday. He is risen. Uh, reject modernity and embrace your legacy. And we will see you guys soon. Thanks again. <laughs>